everyone, and welcome back to the Keen Gamer Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Shamillard, and like always, we've got a great show for you. Uh, before we get started, let me tell you that our panel of podcasters is currently down with the sickness. So if you hear oh, like... Ah, ah, ah. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> it, so if you hear us coughing off, off mic or, you know, just generally looking not like ourselves, that is why. Um, you heard his voice, the front man for Disturbed, Mark O'Callaghan is here. How you doing, Mark? Uh, you know me, I'm just getting down with the sickness. <laughs> oh, uh, 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 uh. You oh, do it way better oh. than I could. <laughs> Uh, and then also beside us or with us today, we have Jessica Orr. Welcome back to the show, Jessica. Hello. I am recovering from being done with the sickness. But yep. what, uh, 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 uh. And the <laughs> in the 20 minutes we were uh, recording before we went live, Jessica and I have tried to get as many of our coughs out as we can. We're going to try and do our best to keep it as, you know, um, great audio as possible. And I think the best audio that we can give you right now is for us to just talk about more Elden Ring. Because it's been a very busy week. Every time I went on to Kotaku or Polygon or any of my gaming websites, they're all just posting Elden Ring tips and guides and tricks, which I know Jessica has written a few herself for Keen Gamer. Um, I guess I'd be curious, because I wasn't on last week to talk to you guys. What are your overall impressions of the game? How are or How far into it are you? And are you looking forward to the next part of your adventure? I'll start with Mark. First of all, uh, Kyle, I apologize for the uh, train wreck, dumpster fire, burning down podcast I hosted last week. Man, I don't know. I looked at the views, and you guys got triple whatever anything I've ever done. So you, you had some magic Kermit that worked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was Kermit. Yeah, <laughs> Elden Ring. My impression of it is like, what? What is this game? Like, first of all, yes, it's it's a great game, but I feel like the John Travolta gift from Pulp Fiction. I'm just looking around like, what? What? I guess I'll go here. I deferred him. I defeated my first boss and I felt proud. So I went to another place and I got my ass kicked. And that's circle life. I'm surprised I haven't seen somebody like post that John Travolta meme of him. Like in the, uh, <laughs> is it, what's the opening area? Like Limerick, Limshire, something like Limbrave? that. Limgrave. Yeah. I believe you guys. Just like him looking around all confused. Uh, as the giant guy on the horse, like the first enemy you see, it's just like walking back and forth. Um, Someone yeah. edited a minute of like Walter White interacting with Elden Ring, and it's the best video of all time. Sorry, says the Kane. <laughs> you mean Paddington 2? <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah. I think Rotten Tomatoes officially has it over um, Citizen Kane as like the the best movie of all time. I could I be wrong. I think one person changed that and the internet they went did. crazy. <laughs> That's, That's why I hate when people do that so much. Yeah. Like, At so least when here. they changed it with Citizen Kane, it was like they added someone from the 30s. You think mm. the 30s knew anything about like the internet? I don't think so. <laughs> if they did. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good for them. You're jerk. So when you say you took down like a, a, your first boss, you don't mean like the first boss that I hear. I don't know no. his name, but the guy with the arms and the dragon. Godric. Godric. So what I've been hearing, because I I'm only about an hour into the game. Unfortunately, my issue with Elden Ring right now is that I don't think it's very compatible to play simultaneously with Horizon, because the button layout is so different. The run button is different. The heal button is different. The, like every single button that you think you know what it does does not do that so yep. when i was playing elden ring for 90 minutes every time i was like i'm gonna sneak up on this enemy and stab him in the back i would just stay in the field and drink my potion on accident just like looking <laughs> incredibly badass i have so, done that i have ran up to a giant on my horse like yeah and then i just <laughs> taking a potion like yeah you take that <laughs> i go to stab and instead i like go to one hand instead i'm like what's going on here um so until i beat horizon i'm kind of holding off on elden ring um, so I have heard so much about this first boss and how he is kind of the first wall players are hitting that it's the game telling you without tutorials, you should not be here yet. There's like what? I don't, I don't know how much, like 10, 20 hours of content to do before you get to this boss. Go and do that first before you come back. Um, so Mark, have you been doing that then? Elden Green has tutorials? Non-verbal, non-text. They, they, they teach through death i guess would be a way they do have some tutorials not mm -hmm. many okay, yeah they do yeah it's kind of like the i know i'm just referencing memes all over the place it's the captain america you know it's in the spider-man homecoming when he's watching the detention video and it's like so mm. 
You try to defeat the first boss. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go back and study. Um, Honestly, with Elden Ring, I think I just might start over. Not because anything bad. I'm like, maybe I want to change up class. Interesting. Do you remember what you started off as? I started as, oh, I forget the name of the class, but it's basically like the night class. I think I want all magic. Bond? Yes. Vagabond? Okay. And that's mostly physical attacks, no, not much uh, magic stats. Uh, no, I mean the the health is great. The or vitality, the stamina mm -hmm. is really great. They have a shield that serves all uh, hundred percent of damage. But oh, wow. I'm on all magic. Okay, interesting. And I I'm or maybe I just got to find like the spells or something. So we'll see. And, and what I've been hearing from a lot of people on podcasts is like, I hit that guy, I turn around, I find this like this ruin or this like uh, pendant that is a game changer. Um, and then you go back to the boss, and then he's you know x amount easier. I, I'm really curious, Jessica. How has your experience been with the game? How far into it are you? Um, yeah, so I'll start with two negative first before I get in, because like All I said right. last one, I was really liking it. Um, there's been quite a lot of discourse about pause button, and like, mm. yeah, I'd love a pause button because at its core, it's a single player game. Like, how many single player mm. games do you know that don't let you pause unless yep. it is like an online like Avengers type multiplayer thing? Um, I've had to make the decision whether to stop my cat peeing in the middle of the in the middle of the room or <laughs> continuing on with a boss. I'm like, what oh. do I do? <laughs> you're just watching the cat pee and you're like, I can't help you. <laughs> Screaming, stop it while I'm trying oh to Oh my do. god. I made Cat's the wrong decision and I lost the boss and the cat peed in the room. So Oh no. Bad. Um <laughs> there's the that and then I really like you were talking about the buttons. I yeah, when you're playing a different game, it can be really confusing. But I think Elden Ring just on its own is very confusing. I've never mm -hmm. liked the Dark Souls heavy and light attacks. I always go through like um like X on my Xbox to try and do a yeah. light attack or B. Um, I really wish you could map differently because the L three is I'm trying to remember now. You think it would be run, but yep. it's crouch. And B, you think it would be crouch, but it's a run. So when I'm running with B and having to jump with A, it's kind of unintuitive. Um, I wish you could map a, it. Holding a face button to run is just like, when's the last time a game like did that, right? Like holding circle, holding X, like yeah. it's weird. It's strange. So sorry to cut but, you off. No, that is literally the, my probably my only two negatives. I've I had to limit my time playing it because I was saying last week whenever I play it, mm -hmm. it's ten hour sessions. It's like, well, I can't do this boss because I'm not a fantastic <laughs> Dark Souls or, or Soulsborne player. So I will go off and explore, and it is my my favorite part of it. What's that in the distance? Sometimes I look at the map and be like, that looks interesting. I wonder what that mm -hmm. is. Usually it's just going off on horseback or something. So I had to be an adult and limit my playtime on Elden Ring. <laughs> so I could be productive. <laughs> Go to your parental um, controls in your console. Cat, that's like three hours playtime a day. <laughs> that's my recommendation. Limit yeah. yourself on Elden Ring. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm still totally loving it. Um, little details like, um, again, I'm not, not going to spoil anything, Mark. Um, there's a certain <laughs> enemy and just the animation of hitting it is so clever. Like where this enemy is, I love the sound it makes. People, I mean, you don't want to spoil it for me. If you want to, like, spoil warning for Kyle. <laughs> no, it's I'm okay. Like, yeah, it's, time I get there. it's just cool the way they do the sign design on this particular enemy. You're like, that's clever. I Are feel like when you headphones? get to it, you'll know. Are you Sorry, playing with Kyle? headphones? Or do you uh, play with your TV speakers or monitor speakers? Uh, both. So I play on my TV speakers, and then when my housemate's in bed, I play on headphones. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, like Elden Ring, I'm like, I'd really like to just, like, immerse myself in this environment until there's nine giant spiders chasing me and then i just hear like the sound in my 3d audio being like no yeah um so when it comes to the pause button i've definitely like this has been a huge issue for a lot of these from software games do either of you guys know if you go to your console's home menu does that do like any kind of pause like if you go nope. to the ps home or xbox home game mm -hmm. runs even in that that's that's, that's why i never use yeah. xbox tip do not use quick resume on elden ring oh uh, okay good yeah. to know okay. And like, I've always heard this um, issue and I've always, you know, as uh, as a, a younger person who probably doesn't have as many responsibilities as other people, in the past week and a half, hearing specifically Jeff Gersman and Jason Schreier being like, I have a child, like I have a baby who's crying. I can't like at any moment's notice, it can be two in the morning, three in the morning, I could be playing my game, that baby's going off and there's nothing Elden Ring will do to help me, you know, balance my life and my game style, which is maybe the one thing that FromSoft can definitely improve uh moving forward um marks uh i want to hear any more like thoughts or opinions any cool enemies you fought any cool items or encounters 
you know what actually is more annoying than no pause button? And maybe I just haven't figured this out. No way to increase the text. To increase the text size? Mm. You're right. Yeah. Because at least with Horizon, like I have really bad eyesight. This is not a joke. This is an actual quote uh, from my eye doctor that he told my sister, which, by the way, patient confidentiality. (laughs) HIPAA. Out the window. Out the window. He said, if it wasn't for glasses or contacts, if I was in the medieval ages, I would be in a dark room listening to music because if not, I would walk off the cliff. Wow. That's so very specific. <laughs> that uh, kind of hurt my feelings. <laughs> but is he wrong? Eh, no, he's not. I mean, your doctor told you if it was 2,000 years ago, you'd be dead. But besides that, yeah, but I'm like, ah, oh, I can't time travel now. Thanks, Doctor. Bummer. Um, yeah, I'll say as well, in my short time playing it, I think this might be the, the worst UI I've seen in a FromSoft game. Maybe it's just because I'm not used to it, but the menus seem like incredibly overwhelming in terms of where items go. Um, I haven't played with crafting, but I bet you that's a whole sub menu that you have to play with. Are you guys adapting to the menus of the game at all? Or is it still kind of like, okay, I think this weapon goes here. Uh, My weight capacity is over here somewhere. Jessica? Um, Yeah, I hate, I know this is from a Dark Souls staple, but I hate having to press down constantly to get an item. If that, even Mm. if if it's live combat, give me a wheel. (laughs) Let me choose from the wheel. Trying to desperately get to a different type of potion because I'm on this potion that I use to try and help me here is so frustrating because it's not like you're bad at the combat. It's just trying to cycle to get to it. Especially Um, like in a closed, uh, closed arena with a boss who's like chasing you as you're tapping D on the D-pad and you're like, you're three hits away from death. I just need to get to this item and I'll do it. And then they kill you as you like drink the potion or whatever. And it's, it's the worst feeling in the world. Maybe you guys can tell me as well. They have this thing on mine where I press Y and then do a directional. It takes from your pouch instead. That's kind of like a wheel. Um, I don't know why they didn't do that just with the the, the down D-pad or something. And you press face Mm -hmm. button or something like that. Um, it's helped me out where I put really important stuff on that so I can quickly do it. Is that new to the game? Um, from what I, what I, from what I remember, I think so. I never go too deep into the mechanics of Dark Souls. I kind of like, whenever I play any of these games, I kind of choose my character, choose my build, and I really lean into it. I don't spend much time, I already spend so much time dying and being frustrated. I'm not going to be like, I'm going to spend an hour and a half learning the actual systems of this game, which I should do. But at the same time, I mean, time, there's so many of them, though. It is work sometimes trying to work it out. It's why I did yeah. those guys. I was telling the markets, I was like, what the hell are Ashes of War? And how do I use them? And what's an affinity? So I had like, to go through and research it all to try and know what the hell yeah. I was doing. Once I find out how to upgrade my weapons and like get healing items, I'll do that. Even if there's a better way in game to do it, I'd be like, I found my path. I like the way I do it. So I'm just going to keep doing it. So I, I don't really have an answer for you on that one, Jess. But it, that might be an, an improvement in this game. Um, I guess. Two questions. Um, I know Mark's played Demon Souls. Jessica, this is your first from soft kind of thing. Uh no, so I was oh, sorry. I, I, no, it's okay. I was playing Bloodborne quite a bit, but I was I was oh, saying right. last week that it's the issue I have with it is the loop of trying to level up to get strong enough for the boss where you're just doing the mm. same thing over and over again. So I bounced off of Bloodborne when I got stuck on like what, like the third or fourth boss. Cause I just didn't want to <laughs> spend eight hours doing that same corridor again. Of but course. Elden Ring f- fixed that for me because it's it's an open world cross with a, um, a Soulsborne game. And I did Switch Fiend. I tried playing Dark Souls on my Switch. And uh, yeah, How'd that go? Do you know if it, if it, play, if it, it played was, well? It was okay on the Switch, mm-hmm. but I just did not get into anything with Dark Souls. Like Bloodborne, I love the look of it. Elden Ring, I think it was a bit more high fantasy, weird mm-hmm. high fantasy than El- yeah. or, sorry Dark Souls. So it just didn't connect with me. And one complaint I've had with from soft stuff for ages and i know it's it's just me in particular i hate that there's no like narrative there's just yeah. nothing there to, yeah. in like a game like returnal i love the story like it really pushed me to try and do these challenges because i wanted to know what the hell's going on what's going to happen at the end i never get that in a from software game but you can find youtube videos that are like why dark souls is the greatest masterpiece of all like you can find the videos people yeah. do the work for you but the game is not like it's not like morgan freeman being like in the land <laughs> of the begotten um yeah. no, i did think the, the forgotten 
I did think the narrator for uh, Elden Ring sounded like a very sleepy David Attenborough. That's my first impression when I heard it. It's like, they woke him up at four in the morning and said, you got to record now. And he said, okay. That was the um, casting call, yeah. Yeah. So I guess the question would be, does playing Elden Ring inspire either of you two to go back and play the FromSoft games you haven't? Like a Sekiro, Dark Souls, Demon Souls? I'll leave that open. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. Like definitely, I think the opposite feeling. for me because it's it's <laughs> fi- it's fixed a bunch of stuff that I really didn't like. But I suppose if you like the other games beforehand, interesting. And keep in mind, I only played Demon Souls, the mm. PS5 uh, remake. And I'm trying to remember, did I have? Did they have a jump button? No, I think Demon Sekiro Souls? Sekiro was the first with the with the jump. Okay, I'm just making sure because I'm like pretty sure. Anyway, like I have not played Bloodborne. Uh, do I want to play any of the Dark Souls games? Eh, maybe. And even though, yes, it's on the Switch, the good thing about Demon Souls, uh, when you die a lot, it, the low times are like, boom. And with the Switch, like it's nothing against the Switch. It's like, mm. all right, got to wait one, two, mm-hmm. three. And it's like, <laughs> I'm back in. And then I die. Yep. One, yep. two. <laughs> but I do want to play Bloodborne. Mm-hmm. Of how people say it's like a Lovecraftian, it's like Lovecraftian in uh, Sekiro. Like I think, like what I've been seeing, that's a lot more narrative focus. I love Sekiro. It is so good. It is. So, and just so seeing good. like some of the like videos, I'm like, ooh, okay. Like when it's mm-hmm. on sale, I'll buy it. I think yes. I'm interested to be in Sekiro actually because it does like yep. it's more like fast paced combat, isn't it, Kyle? It's a lot more fast paced. It's a lot more. It, it's so different in so many ways. It has that main key formula that all these games have. But like mm-hmm. Elden Ring, it really subverts a lot of what you expect to do. You're doing a lot more of the deflecting. Like I know in Elden Ring, I think your L2 is kind of like a parry attack. Your parry is your best friend in Sekiro. because it, It's all about, like Sifu, lowering uh, enemy stamina gauges, breaking them to a point where you can do a death blow and just like take away a whole health bar. Um, for me, it's like the the world building and the narrative in Sekiro is the most digestible. They actually tell you a story in Sekiro that you can like comprehend. And I could, I could, I played it once. I could, I could have told you the story right after. I didn't have to watch a two hour YouTube video explaining uh, the second half of Sekiro or whatever. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I that hmm. would be. I, that's the only one I think I'd try then. Yeah, cool this. character. It, it's also because it, it was like it was produced or uh, published by Activision, so it wasn't like. In a like you know, FromSoft made it, but Activision produced it, so there was a lot of different new elements going into it than before. Um, and for anybody who's looking at these games, I just played Dark Souls one for the first time in January. Uh, you should not be surprised to hear that I had the IGN guide open the entire time doing it, because for me to have fun doing these games, I got to be making progress at least a little bit every couple of hours. If I'm at a point where I'm like, I've been there, I've been there, I've hit this wall with a sword twenty times. Even though there's a note saying that there's a hidden passage behind it, there isn't. Um, having that guide open and just being like, hey, here's what we recommend you do. There's this, like Dark Souls 1 is open world enough where you could do some bosses in, in any order, but kind of playing to like, hey, here's kind of level one. Here's kind of level two. And having somebody else kind of guide me through it, I'm still, I'm still playing it, right? Like, I'm still beating the bosses. I'm still exactly. getting the satisfaction of playing the game and accomplishing things. I'm just not wasting time getting lost. I have other things to do besides running in a circle for three hours straight. Um, and I go, know there's yeah. like some people, like it's a small opinion on the internet. Like if you use guides or in Elden Ring case, like the spirit summons, like, Ooh, but that's easy mode. Yeah. Sh- shut up. It's yeah. in the game. It's right there. You can pick it. You can do it. It's not cheating. It's, it's right the there. And it's like, Okay, if you don't look at guides and don't do spirit summaries, do you get anything? You get money, a- a- anything? No? Mm. Oh, well, who cares? It's your yeah. single player game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, the last question before we move on to the next game. I know you're playing on a PS5. Jessica, are you, are you doing Series S or Series X? Yeah, Series X. How is it performing performing for you guys? Because I, I have heard some complaints that the PS5 frame rate can be a bit iffy, maybe Xbox as well. It's uh it's not bad. Like it's it's pretty good, but I think Horizon is just like so much better. Yeah. And I know in Elden Ring you can, rate. you can choose between the frame rate mode and the performance mode, I believe. So you can choose the resolution over the frame rate. I'm always gonna go frame rate over graphics myself personally. Mm-hmm. Um Jessica, how is it on Xbox? 
I've actually, I don't know, since the update, there's been a, maybe it's just the area I'm in, a hell of a lot of popping. Every time oh. I, every time I tra fast travel to a side of grace, just mm. the whole area like pops in. Um, but frame rate drops haven't been too bad on my Xbox and playing on performance. Um, it, it's only annoying when it happens in combat because you have to be yeah. so precise, but it, it actually hasn't happened all that often. Not like okay. uh, none of us are playing on PC, right? No. Yeah. PC, I've heard is like the worst version of the game right now. Mm hmm. I've heard people can't even upload their saves right now to the cloud. Like they're just like losing save data, which is awful. In a game like this, imagine being sixty hours in, and you're like, "Oh, sorry, your data's corrupt. Go back to this. <laughs> go back to Go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Just oh my make god, a, make a class and and go. And sorry, yep. what class did you pick, Jessica? Uh, I was telling Mark last week I picked Samurai, but it oh, was a mistake yeah. because no, I'm just heavily in strength weapons. I should have went Vagabond. I did get a respec item. My brother mm. told me. Get it here. I won't tell you what you have to do with it, but yep. here it is. I got it, and I don't know what to do with it. So um, <laughs> I will see what happens there. I almost picked Samurai just for aesthetic only, like especially mm. after Sekiro. I'm like, I I wanted to be this class, but I was like, I do like using magic. So unfortunately, I, I think I went for Vagabond or um, Astrologer. I think there's one called like Astroneer mm -hmm. or something. I went for that yes, one. That's like it's cool in this game as well. There's like I don't know if it's been in the other games. There's two magic types. There's Faith and Arcane. So yeah. my brother picked, I can't remember what they're called, Inquisitor or something weird like that, where it's yeah. Faith and Swords, which I think I might do next time because that sounds really cool. Yeah, I think typically all the way back to Demon Souls, you have the two kinds of spells, which are one of them is going to be like more of like you buffing yourself and healing yourself with like Faith Arcana and then or Faith Magic. And then the other one is like damage magic, like fire, arrows, all that stuff. So uh, Elden Ring, I, I literally cannot wait. Like I think about playing it almost every day but i refuse to let myself do it until i beat horizon um which we're going to get into next i am still not that far in mark has beaten the game am i correct mm -hmm. you're yeah. still working still working on the review yes uh i feel like uh it's one of those things like yeah i'll finish it mm -hmm. and like i said on the podcast like at the end of the week and then the batman happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that was a last minute review that was open so I'm sorry, Aloy, but <laughs> Batman? Yeah. Come on. But we won't, um, I probably won't spend too much time on it. I will uh, put up some like light story spoilers up here so I can kind of just talk about where I am with Mark. Um, so that that spoiler warning is up now. Uh, so Mark, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still trying to get to the first of the three lost AI. I have spent so much of this game just going up and down the map strategically, looking at every question mark every side quest, everything. I think I'm getting burnt out. And Oh, no. You you know this. You guys know this. I was playing the first game. Like, I played the entirety of the first game, 100%, and the DLC five days before this game came out. So most of my year, most of 2022 for me, has been playing a Horizon game. So I think it's that. I'm not going to say it's the game itself. I'm going to say I'm burning out on the formula um like i'm doing cauldrons right now i'm like oh man this is the 20th cauldron i've done in three months like i am getting just like my brain is turning off a little bit more as i'm playing it i should advance the story because that would probably help get its hooks back in me um but i am finding that my favorite parts about forbidden west are obviously the graphics the performances by the characters and you know the story i have gotten so far has been really interesting i have some complaints though i don't know if you agree with me about some things I think the inventory management in this one is so much worse than the first game. Really? I, I maybe it's maybe I'm wrong, but you have to you have to like you have a weapon wheel in this game, which will let you choose between say five or six different weapons. But in the first game, you'd get a weapon, and it would have like almost every elemental type of arrow on it. So if you found a machine that was weak to acid or a machine that was weak to fire, you just go to your weapon wheel, choose that arrow, you're good to go. I'm finding myself pausing the game, going to equipment, reloading my weapon wheel mid-combat more often than I ever did in the first game. Maybe it's just me, like I said, Mark, but did you find yourself like pausing and doing a lot of menu navigation? I did, but it's actually interesting. With Zero Dawn, I just had the basic bow. It took me a long time just out of like, oh yeah, I should probably upgrade. So maybe that's why. So I was a lot more focused, like, all right, get these all these different types and a different arrow. So I definitely get where you're coming from, but I didn't find that as an issue. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm definitely like not enjoying how many times I have to pause the game, go to equipment and all that stuff. 
Um, I am, I'm really enjoying just like the sense of discovery. Um, I do need to push the story forward, I think, for me to keep um, keep really enjoying my my playtime with it. And I don't know how long the main story is. I know the main story of Horizon Zero Dawn, you can beat in like two or three days if you skip all the side stuff. So maybe I'll just like mainline the campaign and then have Horizon as like my box checking game while I play Elden Ring. I don't know, but maybe it's just burnout because it's been 120 hours of Horizon for me this year. Um, I'm curious, did you have any like any major cons or like do you, that you want to talk about or? So when I guess it was two weeks ago, we were talking about Horizon, like very first impressions. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, you know, I haven't done the swimming yet, but I want to see even though it happens mid game, which I'm actually surprised that you get the gadget, which actually makes you like go under water, like no breathing, no like air oxygen mm -hmm. limit. And I'm like, Oh, it's okay. And maybe it's my own hype and disappointment because I thought it was really going to change like underwater because yeah. they were kind of hyping it up gorilla games. And it's like, mm. Oh, it's just like everything else. And it's a little janky and it's not that fun. It's beautiful. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Like the going underwater is stunning, but that's the only pro. Even like swimming in the water. Like I was this is like swimming through the water and like the ripples that come from like your character. Like it is like, it is like photorealistic. It is crazy how good this game looks. Um, I think I also want to complain about like, I'm going through the map individually. Like as I'm going through the story, there's so much backtracking I'm going to have to do. Because I'm going to say a majority of the the hidden question mark things I find tell me to come back later because I don't have what I need to do it yet. So I'm spending like 10 minutes out of my way to go north to this like crazy question. Like there has to be something in that mountain. And then it's like, oh, start. And like Aloy will say, I have to come back later. And I'm like, thanks, Aloy. You couldn't have said this 10 minutes ago <laughs> before I fought five Thunder Jaws to get here. Um, Kyle, you would appreciate this reference, but it, it kind of reminds me of... So, Jessica, this uh, in Survivor, <laughs> you can <laughs> – good start. In Survivor, mm. you can find something called uh, a hidden immunity idol, which potentially can keep you safe for one round. Mm -hmm. So this one season, Survivor Micronesia, pretty sure this uh, famous character uh, contestant, Sari Fields, was narrating like, I had to find – so you find clues to get the idol. Like, guess what? I had to go – across the island find the clue back across the ocean found yeah. the clue back across the ocean i'm paraphrasing it's a great moment even mm. if you don't watch survivor but that's kind of mm. like you go here and it's like oh it's actually all the way on the other side of the region it's like what yeah yeah um i will say as well it's because it, i've only played a little bit of elden ring this game holds your hands so much like i i have it's um awesome. I've changed some some of the settings in the menu to be like less handholdy, but man, like you go to Elden Ring and it's just like, have fun, little bird, go fly in whatever direction you want. But man, Horizon is like I'm literally I'll do something, hit pause, look at my side quests, highlight next side quest, go do it, open up menus, find the bandit camp. Like it is like I am, I am less conscious while playing Horizon as time goes on. And in terms of like I'm listening to a podcast or I'm doing, it has become a podcast game for me, which is very interesting. Um, do you think the story maintains a quality throughout that will probably bring me back in? Uh, a couple things. First, yes. And mm -hmm. maybe because I was like trying to finish this uh, review. So I went story heavy instead of like getting myself distracted. Mm -hmm. And even the distractions were pretty good. Yep. Second, uh, Elden Rain is not like fly off little bird. Enjoy <laughs> the meadows. It's they spit in your face and they say, good luck, bitch. Yeah, it's like the baby bird is like in the nest and then a vulture lands in the nest and is like looking you in the eye. And it it's kills like, you, you and it's the, Shh, you died. <laughs> baby bird respawns in its nest. Man, I have a good idea for a video game. Give me, give me one second. Baby bird from soft game. <laughs> Make it a phoenix. Uh, and whenever, you die, whenever you die and come back to life, they call it regurgitation. Um, <laughs> yes. Make it anyway. Uh, um, well, I forgot ahead. the third thing. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, actually, yeah, this, and I know you played, because we kind of have a similar path. We both mm. replayed Zero Dawn. We both played a lot of Forbidden West. And it's kind of like, uh, I don't want to say Forbidden West is like vegetables because I love Forbidden West and I hate mm. vegetables. 
<laughs> it's kind of like, nah, you got to finish this before you have dessert. And that's Elden mm-hmm. Ring. It's like, oh, everyone else is having ice cream. I want them. I want ice cream. It's like, Mark, you didn't finish the cauldron. <laughs> I'm still playing with my peas and carrots over here being like, I want the cake, though. <laughs> It's I like, will oh, interject I want... here, though, as much mm-hmm. as I am loving Elden Ring, I think there's something like the grass is always greener because uh, I'm playing Elden Ring, mm-hmm. but I'm aware that it's a massive game. It doesn't hold your hand. I can't just yeah. check off question marks. I don't know when I'm going to be finished it. And I also very much want to play Horizon. Um, so I kind of like, do I want to be finished with this and try and mm-hmm. play them both at the same time? But I feel like that's a horrible mistake. And I think um, Horizon is finding its spot as the safety spot for players to go to after they get really mad at Elden Ring. I was yep. listening to the Next Lander podcast this week, and I think both Alex Navarro and Brad Shoemaker were like, um, so I'm back to Horizon because I got really frustrated in Elden Ring. <laughs> like, they're like, that's why I'm playing it, because like I can feel comfortable and safe in this world. I don't feel comfortable or, or safe in the other one. So Another thing as well, I find it, this is also why I kind of limit myself. It takes a while for me to get used to the combat again, even though it's the only like game I'm playing at the moment. Yeah, it's not like any other video game where I come in and I'm just like, yeah, I can slash <laughs> these enemies. I go and I do a low level one, and I forget that they're just gonna wail on you if you get hit like once. Mm-hmm. And it's a whole thing. <laughs> it takes me a while to get used to the whole formula again. Yeah, um, some some light. I, I had some cons. Let me throw some pros in for the, before we wrap up on uh, Horizon. Once again, some slight spoiler stuff. This is probably from the first five to ten hours of the game. Um, Mark, I was so shocked when I found out that the Normandy was in uh, Horizon Forbidden <laughs> West. There's a hub for you and your friends to hang out, and you just go there, and then they're just, like, hanging out all the time. That's a really cool innovation that I didn't see Horizon bringing in was, like, a hub for you to hang out in. Ta-da! It's really cool. Um, and the other thing I really like is that the entirety of the first game, which I think is like, whatever, 50, 60 hours, uh, Aloy, Silence, who's Lance Reddick, and one other character has the focus, which is the piece of technology that lets you see kind of all the old world history and data. And in this game, Aloy is handing them out like chocolate chip cookies. She's like, you get a focus. You get a focus. Look under your chair. There's a focus. You all get focuses! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so... It is very, very cool because she's had it her whole life. So we don't really see her, the 20 year gap of her as a kid getting it and then her learning the history. But now her best friends, Varl and Erend and some of the characters, you know, from the first game, they have a focus now. And they're like, so the humans used to have this thing called sports, uh, where they used to toss ball. Like, it's just so funny hearing these characters, which they've really they're really well written. The facial animations are some of the best I've seen in games, maybe since like Detroit become human, which is a weird reference. But um, yeah, I'm just really liking what they're doing with the world building and letting other characters see the world through Aloy's eyes. She's so polarizing when she's like, no, you guys don't understand. You guys don't know what's going on. Only I do. When she brings other people in and she re- learns that she needs to rely on other people to get stuff done. That has been the best part for me so far is kind of her growth. 100 percent and i like i mentioned in my review like people like the critic like aloy is boring and i 100 percent disagree with that and i love the arc that she goes on and you can definitely see the seeds of it in the mm. first couple of hours of how she's still in that outcast mentality not just role but as she opens up and i think Actions speak louder than the words. She's giving out focuses like uh, Oprah with cars. <laughs> yeah. No, I think we talked two weeks ago, and I, I was telling you, Mark, that I think Aloy is a great protagonist, but I do think she's one of the harder ones to relate to because she just seems so cold all the time, and she has no sense of humor. But when you think about her character and where she's come from and what she's had to go through, it, it makes sense. Like, she's the sole savior of, like, this planet, and nobody else knows what she's going through. And it's really cool to see her loosen up a little bit. A hundred hours into this franchise exactly <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean I she think, was yeah well what would you say like i want to say in the story uh like cutscenes, but more of like one-off comments which i feel mm-hmm. like improv from ashley birch yeah like i get it. i she kills it in this role as always but yeah and I, i've actually laughed out loud a couple times in this game which is like not something i'd expect from a post-apocalyptic game but you know at the beginning of the uh when you're trying to get through the um to the embassy and there's like this really annoying like religious guy who's just like re- reading from his scroll being like oh thou shall not do anything without my permission and she's like shut up 
she's like, I, Ch- yeah, she I shushes laughed. him, and I was like, bah. yeah, she just looks at him and goes, Ch-. I thought it was so funny. Like, so I don't think I laughed out loud more than three times in the first game. I've already hit like double digits in this one. So, and one on last them. thing I'll mention is like the, the diversity of the world. Mm. And th- that means so many things. I think of the locations. It can be a snowy mountain. Mm. I was talking about it last week in the podcast. Like it's that typical open world of like, guess what? You're in the ocean. Now you're in a snowy mm. mountain. How does it make sense? I don't know, but I like that. Yeah. Two is the tribes and all the different like backstories and the mythology in the old world and a new world. And three is the actual diversity in the characters. Yeah, I was which that too. Which, of course, it was like conscious of Guerrilla Games, but just like you're playing it and it's just so diverse and rich. It's pretty damn awesome. And it's the diversity of the cast as well as like they don't make everyone look like a freaking model. Like, obviously, this is a post apocalyptic game, but like people have like weird blemishes and like maybe freckles on one side of their face, not the other. Like, nobody is perfect in this game, obviously. Nobody is perfect in the world in general. Except uh, Harry Moss, right? Yeah, yeah. Just I mean, and yeah. and Lance Riddick, he is a ten out of ten. Uh-huh. We <laughs> we all know this. Sorry. Wow. So, the, so the two the two stunt casting people look phenomenal, but everybody else <laughs> in this game looks like shit. Um, <laughs> hate are gonna hate. But no, I thanks for thanks for saying that, Mark. Because I was also gonna say like the, the diversity of this cast. Like, of course, we have another like white woman protagonist, but. Everybody yeah. else surrounding her has such a nice, colorful background and such a, a rich history that I'm loving just digging into into all of that. And so. even with disabilities, you got like mm, some yeah. uh, neurological um, disabilities, which I didn't like. I don't know if they made it like explicit, but like mm. like watching it, it's like holy, oh my god! Like good on you, Gorilla Games. Yeah, and so, like. I don't know if there was a deaf character, but there was a blind character. Granted, he mm. uh, was made blind because of a, yeah. a fight. That was a yeah. great side quest. If you get to that, that's really good. Yeah, I did that yesterday or two days ago with the blind character. And then I also shout out the last thing I did before ending my session yesterday was I, I, I met an amputee, somebody who's missing an arm. And I'm like, you know what? That's cool as well. Like, like just show as many kinds of people as you can in this game. And I'm going to enjoy it a lot more because of it. Because if you're um, going to show the whole world, okay, the USA, Western, then you got to, like, be diverse. You can't have, like, the same person with slight variations. It yeah. just makes the world feel so much bigger than it actually is. Yeah. Well, that you actually want to explore. And that's all I'll say. Done. Cool. I just realized <laughs> we're at the 40-minute mark, and I'm like, we got two more games and three new stories to discuss. Um <laughs> That's See, the danger of me on the podcast. Just, yeah, you know so this, my, Kyle, Jessica. My my goal is to roll credits on Horizon, hopefully this week, because man, March is going to be busy. Like we talk about the games that are out right now. Before we um hop into the next game with Jessica, I have a list of all the games coming out in March. Um, so Triangle Strategy just came out. Uh, Chocobo GP, the Final Fantasy racing game, March tenth. Tunic, which I cannot wait for, March sixteenth. Uh, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, which I hear nobody talking about. I played that I'm demo. talking about it. I want to play it. I played the first demo. It was really Dude, cool. that boss took me forever to kill. Same. I was at my most toxic self trying to do that boss. <laughs> I streamed that demo and I was like head on the microphone being like, guys, I'm so sorry. It's been two and a half hours. I don't know how to kill this guy. <laughs> I watched that stream. That was really sad. Yeah, I know. No, that's so mean. I didn't watch it. <laughs> I'm curious about the game, but I'm going to keep an open mind for it. Um, Rune Factory 5 on March 22nd, the uh, Harvest Moon RPG. Uh, a little indie called A Memoir Blue on March 24th. March 25th, hold on to your wallets, everyone, because we have Ghostwire Tokyo, we have Tiny Tina's Wonderland, and we have Kirby in the Forgotten Land. I'm all coming out that same I day. Play every single one of them. <laughs> yes. Can I get a code for all of those, please? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so but March Kyle, is going to be busy. You got to finish your Brussels sprouts of Horizon <laughs> before you play. Can I just get into the dog instead? No. <laughs> all right. Fine. You Can know you pro- the dog has a problem. Also, don't give dogs Brussels sprouts. I really, that will stink up your house way worse than anything else your dog could do. <laughs> and um, they say podcasts while well, are educational. Yeah. 
So, so far we've done the Elden Ring and the Horizon. Um, some of the big news from this week was that Nintendo dropped a demo for Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Uh, Jessica has played it, and I cannot wait to hear her thoughts on it. Yeah, um, so all I've been playing is Elden Ring and a little Kirby demo, so <laughs> they are very different. Yeah. Um, I there's Kirby has like a thing called Wild Mode on it now, which is like, okay, you're not a child, but you can play Kirby. Here we go. Okay. You get like more coins and stuff as a reward, but I mean, it's not difficult at all. Mm. It's it's like a fairly easy game, even by normal standards, uh, which has just been the Kirby history. Um, but it's been it's super fun just going through levels. I've heard that mm. it's not going to be quite like the demo makes it seem where you unlock a level and then just go on to it and do more. I heard it's a little bit, I guess, not story heavy because it's yeah. Kirby. <laughs> but not quite like they're, they're presenting it. It was fun. It seems like just a cool game that I want to pick up on the Switch and while someone else is on the TV and have yeah. a fun time. It's super cute. I can't wait to play it with my nieces. There's a co-op mode in it. Um, uh, yeah, I've never actually been like a huge Kirby player because mm -hmm. <laughs> traditionally it was whatever my brothers bought and then I, I played it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I always... Kirby's my Smash character. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Yeah, I love Kirby. Uh, I love the mechanic of just... He's also a psychopath. He will eat anything. Oh. Yeah. Also, remember in the Smash Bros. Ultimate like narrative where uh, every character in the universe died except for Kirby because he's some like <laughs> god, apparently. Like Mewtwo died. Like wow. Cloud. Like everyone died except for Kirby. And he's he saves the day. He saves Mario. Kirby's the cockroach of the, the Smash <laughs> world. It will survive no matter what. A little cockroach. I was going to say God, but yeah, cockroach yeah. works fine too. Tomato, tomato. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it's just collecting <laughs> coins, doing mm -hmm. levels. The mouthful mode is pretty funny. You'll just suck up a car and be a car. Nice. Um, it's just like another way of being like a large, you're changing into a large vending machine or mm -hmm. thing instead of taking the form of a person. Uh, boss fights are incredibly easy. Well, I mean, I just came off Elden Ring. Like, it's it's not going to be hard. <laughs> but it's fun. It's like a fun little, I know I can complete this game when it comes out. Um, I'm probably a little less excited for it than I was before because, okay. I don't know, I guess my expectations were just, I just like, I really want to play this cute game. But it's not, it's not challenging at all because obviously it's for kids more. But yeah, enjoyable. Do you know how much is like, how much is in the demo? Is it like the first two levels, the first like World 1? Well, it's laid out a little um, strangely, like I said, but there was three very small levels, basically. Okay. So mm -hmm. I think that's maybe like a pretty, maybe it's not good for Nintendo to drop this demo because the whole thing has been Kirby will be an open world adventure and you're going to have these massive areas to explore. And I've heard from other people as well that this demo does not deliver on that promise. No, definitely not open world. Mm. Um, and that, yeah, because even people doing previews and who've got a code already have said, yeah, yeah. this isn't an open world game. I thought it would have been more fun yeah yeah despite all that though i'm still as excited at, for it as you are um the co-op mode even like me and my partner will probably play it together um and then i'm also i just want to be a part of that that waddle d hub world where they're opening cafes and they're doing like jet skiing like i'm not sure if you've seen that from the trailers but the uh the hub stuff looks really cool in my opinion yeah and also if you play the demo you get two codes for i think they're calling them liveries must be just kirby can dress up in different things um, i'm like okay download kirby demo because I like free stuff. Yeah. And it's very short as well. Those three levels took me, what, like 25 minutes? If even. Yeah. I usually avoid demos and like even like with music like singles because I always like just getting the full package, like an album or the game whenever I can. Like if I play the first three levels of Kirby now and I have to wait three weeks before I can play the whole game, I'd rather just, just wait, get the whole experience out at once. But that's always been me personally. Um, yeah, Mark, are you going to play Kirby at all? Not immediately. There's mm -hmm. just... There's just so much going on. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe Nintendo will put it on sale in 2027. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah. Unless you are Mario plus rabbits, good yeah. luck. Or yeah. Luigi's Mansion ish. Did so, the Luigi's Mansion go on sale? I mean, I feel like they're always like 30 bucks. Okay, not always, mm -hmm. but like that's the prominent one. Like, yeah. Kyle It'll Jessica go on sale. And talking about, yeah. And like Halloween time, usually I find it, like it goes down like half price or lower than that. Um, so that was the Curry demo. I'm like I said, I cannot wait for that game. Uh, one game left to talk about before we go into news. I'm just going to talk about Sifu probably one last time on this podcast. Man, that game does an awful job explaining itself in the first like level. 
I was on here two, three weeks ago being like, I don't know. It's like, it's really hard. It's frustrating. I find myself like getting physically agitated with this game. But then last week or two weeks ago, I was playing it and like it, it, it's clicked now and it's so much fun. Like if this game had a better tutorial or a better like here's everything happening around the game that you don't see that's affecting how you're playing or like how enemy AI is attacking you. Once that all clicked, I love this game. Um, it'd be a great PS Plus game or I guess it's not. It's, it, is it only on PlayStation? I think it is. It's not mm-hmm. on Game or Xbox. But if anybody has heard me talk about Sifu and has been a little hesitant about it, go into it. There is a little menu somewhere that will show you like, hey, here's what this means. Here's what this means. But getting into that gameplay loop of trying to beat a level at the youngest age possible so you can start the next level at that age. I'm at a point now where I'm starting level three at age 22, where two or three weeks ago, I was probably 50 or 60 years old starting level level three. So I genuinely have felt progress in myself as a player in this world, as well as just like an understanding of how it works. So Sifu is really cool. Great music, great lighting, great cinematography. I said, if you like movies like The Raid or Old Boy, you should probably play Sifu. So that's going to be a wrap on the games we're playing. Once again, Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West, Kirby, and some Sifu. Let's hop into the news, shall we? Um, The first news story, and honestly... I was skimming through the news and like there's not a lot this week. Pretty slow news week as everybody is too busy playing Elden Ring. Um, but let's start with the bad and end with the good, shall we? We all remember the Game Awards from four months ago, right? We had a Game yes. Awards? Jeff Keighley's Game <laughs> Awards, I believe. Wait, what the hell? One game of the year. It takes two. Was it? Mm-hmm. What was it? Okay, yeah, it sorry. Oh, it takes two, Kyle, right? It was, it was you're podcast. kicked out of the gaming journalist <laughs> Get out of here. All right, back to the grocery store for Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it, it feels like so long ago, doesn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> but during that award show, we got, I will say, a pretty cool cinematic trailer, despite everything behind the trailer, for Quantic Dreams Star Wars Eclipse, which was going to be a Star Wars game that I believe takes place during the High Republic. Somebody who's more into into Star Wars might be able to correct me, but that was the pitch for the trailer. So as of right now, we're referring to a couple of articles. The current, and I've heard this from Jeff Grubb as well from VentureBeat, um, this game is not coming out until at least 2027. Like, and the main reason, and I'll say this now, the main reason it's going to be delayed so long is because nobody wants to work for Quantic Dream. Let's remember that this is the studio that had um, uh, Elliot, what is their last name? Uh, Page. They had had Elliot Page in the game, and I believe that there is some pretty awful stuff that happened between David Cage and Elliot Page, which I'm realizing their last names rhyme, which will be good moving forward. Something about he wanted her to do like some 3D modeling or wanted them to do some 3D modeling that they were not comfortable with. and then obviously you have everything about Quantic Dreams, uh, sexism culture that exists in their studio, how they treat certain cast and employees by overworking them. And I guess the broad question, let's just zoom zoom out from Quantic Dream for a second. Look at studios like Activision. Look at studios like Blizzard. There are a lot of studios right now getting a lot of heat for this kind of, um, uh, I'll say, harassment of their employees, just to, to keep it keep it straight. Um are we going to see studios like this like just start to sink in terms of how prolific they are in the games industry? Because there are so many studios out there hiring talented people to work on their next indie, to work on their next whatever. The gaming industry is so big right now, you don't have to work for Activision to have a successful career. So I guess open floor question, is this kind of the first sign of some of these like maybe major companies starting to be brought down a little bit i think so because like this is this is a huge star wars game and they can't Mm -hmm. get people to voluntarily work on that because why would you want to work in an environment that you know is is actively toxic yeah like activision blizzard has this like sort of silver lining where it might possibly change now it's under xbox quantic dream doesn't have that i can't remember if they're still going to the courts about it but david cage and has just been incredibly like well no nothing happened this isn't that isn't it's just our culture like Mm -hmm. they're, they're they're not actively trying to fix that why would you want to go to a studio when you've got like you said so many other places you can go to the indie scene has exploded 
and compared to AAA, it is so much more inclusive of what they're what they're working on, who they're hiring. Um, I, I hadn't thought about it too much until you brought this up, but definitely. I want to go back to even like the game awards. The last two years, the game of the year winners have been It Takes Two in Hades. Relatively small teams with a very like focused and passionate team that got the job done. I, as far as I know, Hades was not a team that had to be overworked overnight and during weekends to get that game done. Uh, Super Giant has always been good with keeping their staff safe. Um, and the fact that David Cage is still CEO of Quantic Dream, despite all of this, I think there's, he's almost the, the Bobby Kotick, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a singular person who is causing a toxic environment. Like I, I'm, I've always been impressed by Quantic Dream's games. We'll, we'll look at the games uh, objectively, despite everything happening in the background. Detroit is one of the prettiest looking games and has some incredibly wild moments that I still remember to this day. Yeah, same with me of Heavy Rain. Like, I would put yeah. it in one of my favorite. When you were playing that for the first time, it was incredible. That's why it yeah. makes this stuff so frustrating. Yeah. Beyond Two Souls was a little bit hokey in my mind. That one was a little bit too... It was okay. I get what you mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, you know, the part when you're in Iran and you're doing all that stuff was a little bit whatever. It but went everywhere. Yeah. It went everywhere. But <laughs> it is... And I, I also... This brings to mind the uh, the Elder Scrolls Six trailer, which I know Noah is, like, spinning in his chair right now thinking about ESO 6. But we got that reveal trailer, I believe, in 2018 at E3. That 30-second video of a camera panning over a city, and it said Elder Scrolls 6, and everybody lost their minds. It's been four years since that trailer. When's the last thing we heard about ESO 6? I or mean, not, I, we, me and Mark were talking about ESO, this last yeah. week of not advertising um, Guardians enough. Some yeah. games get advertised too much and way mm -hmm. too early. Like, if this is releasing in 20. 27 or 23 just to have a cool moment at the game awards uh yeah. wrong move in my opinion yeah it, if, if hype was a line graph it peaks after the the announcement trailer and the more time that goes from that trailer to the uh reveal that line graph is going lower and lower and lower of people anticipating your title because there are other people making similar games that may just end up being better than the one you've spent 10 years making yeah i yeah. don't i don't much else to say on that i just think it's a i think it, i it, it's interesting and it sucks at the same time. Yeah, it just again like so in my era, there's a uh, something like a uh, capital regions like best workplaces to live, mm -hmm. and a lot of industries you don't know like what's the worst place to work. I'm not gonna say an advantage because it's kind of gross to say, mm -hmm. but at least people know like hey, if you get hired by this studio, there is a horrible history. And like when you sent us like the news and I just like remembered and stuff I didn't even know about, which I don't even think I say on the podcast. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just disgusting. Yeah. And I think back to what Jessica was saying as well, but like, this is Star Wars. Like there are people out there who have probably had the dream for a long time. I would love to work on a Star Wars. I would love to be a part of the Star Wars franchise. That's all I want to do. And you're a young game developer or even like, there's so many people in our industry of like writers and reviewers who eventually get hired for narrative tasks in Star Wars. I believe there's like an ex-IGN uh, writer who now is like a narrative person for Star Wars or Lucasfilm. But like that is a dream people have. And if somebody offered you your dream and you had to say no because of work culture, like that sucks, man. Like that sucks so much. It does. I, I don't want to say silver lining. Let's say like... Actually, I can't even list an example. Um, here's the thing about Star Wars games. Games. Mm -hmm. The good thing is there's going to be plenty <laughs> of Star Wars games mm -hmm. by many different studios. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it sucks that you cannot work on this because of like a horrible studio. Hopefully, if someone wants to, they get to be hired by another studio who's not like them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's all awful, especially like this is like the first non EA Star Wars game they've announced. Like, hey, guys, guess what? Star Wars is now back in the public. Anybody can make a Star Wars. I guess we know that Ubisoft is doing a Mandalorian thing, but we haven't seen anything from that yet. So this is like kind of like, hey, other companies besides EA can do Star Wars. Oh, no, we don't want this studio doing it. We don't want that studio doing it. So we'll we'll see as time goes on, as we always do. <laughs> this might have been in the uh, the Guardians of Ga'ul movie. I don't remember. But anyway, um, so one more news story. Movie. Underrated. One more news story real quick. I know some of us are fans of this franchise. I was super happy when I found out Resident Evil 2, 
3 and 7 are getting next gen upgrades. First of all, those games look amazing already. Maybe not 7 because 7 also has like that VR for me anyway, it kind of doesn't look great in VR, which is usually how I've played 7. Um but man, Resident Evil 2 looks so good already. The fact that they're adding like lighting and 3D audio and all that stuff excites me. Are you going to want to go back and play any of these again, Jess? Oh, yeah. Literally oh, yeah. any excuse to play 2 Remake or 7 again. <laughs> I've, I've platinum 7 now on the PlayStation, so now when I want to play it, I go on the Xbox and get achievements when I want it. Uh, definitely. And load times as well. They're going to get faster load yes. times. I'm very excited for the dual sense features as well. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I want to see what 7 looks like with updated visuals because it's the oldest one. It's like five years old. Uh, not 3. It's the most recent one I've played. It's still a good game, but I don't think it's as iconic as um, 2 Remake or 7 no, Remake. Super excited for it. For me, it's like the lighting. Like, you know when you're like, you have your like a uh, grenade launcher and you're like launching like fire and acid, like just seeing yeah. the lighting off that, off the walls and floor. I never thought I would get excited about lighting on the floor in video games, but man, having a PS5 has really converted me into reflections in a way <laughs> I have not cared about. Even my own reflection I don't care about. So this is <laughs> really revolutionary stuff for video games. Big reflection fan? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. When they have the right tracing going on, and control <laughs> in particular, oh man, it's incredible. So good. So I love the sound reflections from Milan. That's all I can <laughs> contribute to this conversation. I've not played any Resident Evil games. Also, can we talk reflection. about Milan? Mm. So there's no <laughs> official date for these releases yet, but they're going to be free upgrades. So if you already own the games, you're going to be able to upgrade your uh, pre-existing copy to the next gen, which is fantastic. I know Sony is leaning away from the free upgrades from PS4 to PS5. So it's good to see other third parties like Capcom continuing being like, we don't, we don't care. It's five dollars, just, just upgrade, you know. Although this is a big year for free upgrades because you had Cyberpunk, which is basically mm. just improved the game immensely. The Witcher is getting an update, and mm -hmm. these three Resident Evil games, like they're pretty big. It's, it's a good way to prolong the sales of the games as well, I believe, instead of just pumping out um, more DLC or sequels. Especially if we're at a point where we, we've got the two and the three remakes, we've got uh, Village out recently, like Capcom will probably take some time before their next Resident Evil mainline game, or even the Resident Evil 4 remake could still be a little bit down the horizon. So these free upgrades could just be for us to kind of have something to keep us busy until the next remake or new entry comes out for us. So that's going to wrap up our news of the week. Um... It was crazy. I was asking everyone, what should we do for the topic this week? And Jessica was like, it's the Switch's fifth birthday this week. And I was like, oh, my God, how am I wearing a Mario hat all the time? And I forgot it was the Switch's birthday. <laughs> so on this week's show, we're going to kind of just talk about our memories of the first five years of the console, what we kind of expect for the rest of its lifespan. And then we're also going to kind of talk about our favorite games to play, um, exclusives, whatever. Um so let's start with kind of the first five years of the, of the Switch so far, which Jessica Ooh. actually made a really nice uh, document for us to kind of go through. Uh, was it March 3rd it launched? March 3rd, 2017. Along with Breath of the Wild. Did you guys get your Switch day one or were you guys late to the party? I got my Switch when Pokemon Sword and Shield came out. Because oh, okay. I'll, I'll do my show and tell and I. I got the... Is, you can pronounce help me pronounce is it Zaki and Zamazenta? Uh yes, that is correct, I think. <laughs> and I love I just love the color scheme. It's a switch light. Oh, I love that. Yeah. The blue oh, and the cool. red. I I've I was piggybacking off my brother and my housemate switch for years. I was yeah. like, okay, no, it's time. Um I love and that. I'm more of a portable fan, so that's why I got the switch light. Yeah, what about you, Mark? Did you when did you get your switch? I got it for Christmas, and I don't know why with like consoles. Maybe because I'm one of those people, like, when you buy gifts, it's like, what do you want for Christmas, Mark? I'm like, eh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. And I just yeah. don't give out ears, and it's like, come on. I'm like, well, <laughs> Switch. You really want the Switch? I mm. could buy a Switch, but you, you can buy it for me. Thanks, Mom. I mean, <laughs> Santa. Santa. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And Dad. Yeah, Mark, you know most of our listeners are between the ages of four and six. Come on, man. <laughs> Which makes me a horrible, <laughs> horrible uh, panelist. Well, we got Kermit. We got Kermit. So they, they were, they, I think that's why our, our view spiked mm. last week is because that yeah. Kermit impression. We Not make... because the kids were like, ooh, Brian Gumble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kids love Brian Gumble these days. They we love make, real uh, sports. <laughs> we shall make puppet versions of ourselves and we'll just do the show. Oh as my puppets. God. 
every week moving forward. Um, so my quick switch story, I did not get a pre-order in in time. So March 3rd, 2017, I know exactly what I was doing. I was sitting on my couch with the uh, like the local buy, sell, trade ads open, waiting for a scalper just to post what I wanted. Oh. I didn't care what they asked for. I was ready. So I remember I was doing it for like half an hour, 45 minutes before I saw a very sketchy ad for a guy being like, I got nine switches. Who wants one? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't care what happens. I really want to switch. So I met some guy in a back alley. He opened up the trunk <laughs> of his car. He said, which one do you want? And I said, uh, this one, please, sir. And he said, you you forget this ever happened. And he drove away. And I was like, OK, <laughs> just holding my switch. But the thing that happened to me was I forgot I had made plans with a friend that day to hang out. So he came over to my place. He was like, what's this? And I'm like, oh, it's the new switch and the new Zelda. He's like, can I try it? And I was like, well, I mean, I haven't I haven't even played it yet. But yeah, go ahead, man. You're the guest. I spent the rest of my day watching him play Breath of the Wild before I had played a second of it. <laughs> And he left the next day. He was like, bye, man. Thanks for hanging out. And I was like, you're welcome. That is quite the Switch story, Kyle. <laughs> so I had the console. I went way, way, way out of my way to buy it, only to watch somebody else play it the first three yeah, hours. Yeah, like you nearly got away. murdered getting this Switch to watch someone else play it. Yeah, seriously. The guy's wearing a ski mat. No, he wasn't. But um, <laughs> so that that's my story. I remember exactly where I was. And I, I got my Switch. And um, I didn't have my physical version of Breath of the Wild because I had pre ordered that. So I went to the eShop. I'm like, there's five games available right now. I'm buying 1-2 Switch. I'm buying, uh, I think it was Super Bomberman. There was a There was a, a racing game called, I think, Fast RMX, maybe. And I got Binding of Isaac. So I, I I bought almost every launch game except for Snipper Clips, I think, which I still kind of regret not buying. That game still looks really fun. Um, so that's our origin story. From the moment you first got it to this moment right now, what are your thoughts on the console? Do you rank it as like a, a high tier console in your opinion, a low tier console? Um, Mark, what do you think? Um, is it worth meeting someone in a back alley to get a switch? Yes, it is. That's, that's not an endorsement. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> kids. That. I'll say right now it's the only thing worth meeting somebody in a back alley for as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Kyle. He's our demographic is watching this and you are corrupting them. Sorry, you said a statement. I just wanted to make sure I clarified. When it comes to back alleys and meetings, avoid them. <laughs> anyway, ish. Um, oh, my throat hurts again. Is that your final answer, Kyle? Uh, that's my final answer. Jeopardy. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Who wants to be a millionaire? Come on. <laughs> But yeah, since your time, like, are you, you, you enjoy your Switch? Is it like, would you say you played every day? You played every couple months? Like, there are definitely periods where I'm just playing the Switch all the time. And not yeah. because I'm like, oh, I'm sick of it. It's like, well, no game really interests me that much. But when there's that one game, I'm in that bed mm -hmm. off screen, just being lazy, playing. Yeah, which, like, that first year, um, I'll go back to Jessica's doc that she made here. And I actually have a question I'll ask after this as well. Excuse me. Um, so the first year the Switch was out, we got Breath of the Wild, we got Mario Kart 8 port, we got Splatoon 2, and we got Mario Odyssey. Those are four, like, all four of those games could have been Game of the Year contenders for me that one year. They started off so strong. I think my PS4 was getting a little dusty. I may have had PSVR, but I wasn't really using it that much. 2017 was the year of the Switch. And I guess the question I want to ask you guys both is 2022 going to be the second year of the Switch? Because their current lineup is stacked. And we're seeing a lot of sequels to the games I just mentioned. Splatoon 3 is coming out this year. Um, what do you think, Jessica? I think you're totally right, because we're even getting Mario Kart 8 DLC, Splatoon Seriously. 3. Uh, there's two Pokemon, two massive Pokemon games going out this year. Yep. Maybe Breath of the Wild 2. I feel like Breath of the Wild 2 would like push that over to the yeah, this is 2017 a, all over again. A lot, a lot of maybes too, like Bayonetta 3. Where is mm -hmm. that landing? Uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy Remake. Where is that landing? Um, there's another game that is supposed to... Oh, Mario and Rabbids 2. Um, like, those are some high, high rated games that people are looking forward to sequels to. I think it's going to be a hell of a year for Nintendo. And I was thinking about it. Last year was a pretty slow one for them, too. I feel like that they really hit the brakes last year and they're going full steam ahead this year. What was the big game for them besides Metroid Dread? 
and I guess they had Pokemon Snap. They had like some small releases. Yeah, but... like the the remake of Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like Metro Dread was the only Nintendo game I was seeing on Game of the Year lists at the end of the year last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to argue this could be year three. And it's like, why year two? And I know like the amount of amazing games, mm -hmm. but I'm sorry, 2020 was the year of Animal Crossing. Yes. And you can't deny how big that game was. Yeah. Especially like the pandemic sales of not just the game, the Switch in general. Mm -hmm. That is like, what i don't care what else came out in uh 2020 for the switch that defined the switch people 100%. wanted the switch like the takeover i don't want to say just at the right time because the right time and pandemic shouldn't really be in the yeah. same sentence or unless mm -hmm. like hey this is the right time to wash your hands yeah <laughs> i get i mean yeah that okay i made an exception <laughs> But and just as like the world shut down and mm -hmm. everyone's playing Animal Cross and everyone wanted to switch just to play that, mm -hmm. you you really can't deny that in the no, history. No, my of the friends switch. list, it was so every like what I don't even have like 10 friends. Nine out of the ten friends were <laughs> all playing um Animal Crossing? Animal Crossing. And it was people yeah. like I I just knew occasionally who never played games, but like I need to play Animal Crossing. My mom played Animal Crossing, like it was a sensation. And I know the global supply chain is a huge part of it too, but we spent most mm -hmm. of the last couple of years with people still not being able to buy this damn console. Like, mm -hmm. I remember when the Wii came out and everybody was going crazy for the Wii and they were like, whenever any store restocked, they were off the shelves in minutes. You had to be either at the door before opening or like have an insider tell you like, hey man, we're getting a stocking of Wiis tomorrow at 2 p.m. Just so you know. Um, but here we are and there's still people... That I hear stories of anecdotally that are like, I want to play the Switch, but I can't find it, which is yeah. wild. It's it's a combination of popularity and like uh, tech shortage for the for the parts and stuff. But that's and like a I'd lot. say a little bit of Nintendo too. They have they're so weird sometimes. Yeah. Like I don't know if the Switch, but even like I guess the SNES Mini was different. Like we're only doing this many, and then we're stopping. We'll yeah. we'll definitely talk about the weirdness of Nintendo when we get to our favorite games. But I think with the Switch and Nintendo, so I was, I don't want to say sucker, because I think it did, had some, uh, it had pretty good games. But the Wii U, I feel like, was a flop for Nintendo. I think it was as well. Like, it's, again, some really great games, but just, like, what they wanted, like, especially after the Wii, and they had the 3DS at the time, which I feel like did pretty good for them. Mm -hmm. Great just, for them. Exactly. Did not work. So it's like we were I remember like the lead up for the Switch was like, oh, let's hope it's not the Wii U. And the Switch is everything that the Wii U should have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's one of, if not their uh, best selling consoles. And it just made like a big comeback for Nintendo. I can't remember what the current stat is, but I think the Switch is currently like if you look at all the Nintendo consoles, I think it's currently outsold the 64 or possibly even something better than that. Like it may have outsold the NES by now already. Yeah, it recently yeah. Like, reached the milestone. Yeah, I remember. I think I think the number one selling Nintendo console is still the DS. I could be wrong about that. Uh, also, keeping in mind that the DS had like five different spinoffs with like the Lite and the um, the Mini 3DS, or whatever it was. 3DS. Yeah. And, but the Switch has been so well. I have to wonder, we are five years into its lifespan. How much juice do you think it has before we see either uh, an innovation of the Switch or Nintendo's new console, Jessica? Sorry, I hope really soon because I was desperate to get Switch OLED. I just, mm -hmm. I really wanted an upgrade because I really, I love the Switch Lite, but I, I really wanted to play it on my TV. Yeah. Certain games I just think benefit from it. Um when everybody thought the OLED was going to be the pro, I was like, I'm all in, I'm going to mm -hmm. get it, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> and now I'm at a weird moment where I was like, I don't want to get a Switch OLED or an ordinary Switch because like, I, I kind of know there's going to be something else. Yeah. At this point, I don't think it's going to be called Switch Pro or whatever. I think it's just going to be like Switch 2, whatever yeah, their I, version of that is going to be. Yeah. Switch, no Switch, <laughs> Switch Switch X. Yeah. Oh, yes. Some, something something like weird. Um, yeah, so I... Yeah, it's common, but I do believe it'll be like, like what the, the 3DS was to the DS. Mm. And I, I was hearing you talk about Pokemon Legends last week, and I was, I was really curious to hear what you thought. But man, it is so jarring playing that game and then going to any other modern game. Am I right? Yeah. Like having mm -hmm. a tree pop in like two feet away from you, having like a Pokemon move at five frames, like 
I was saying as well, yeah, it's the gra- it's the graphics from like it honestly just reminds me of like I know it doesn't look like a DS mm. game, but it just it's it's evoking those memories while you're you're right, like these top tier consoles are yeah. having these incredible graphics. And it, even if you have bad graphics, it's art style. I don't think the art styles unless you're like Breath of the Wild, I don't think it's incredible on the Switch. Unless yeah. it's or an indie game. If, if, if Pokemon Legends gameplay wasn't as good as it is, in my opinion, I don't think I would have stuck with that game as long as I did, which was pretty much the entire main game up to uh, completing the entire Pokedex for me. Yeah. Um, I would have dropped it way sooner because I, I'm the older I get, the less patience I have for like just bad, bad game design and <laughs> world design and stuff like that, mm-hmm. especially from Nintendo, like the pioneers of like the current gaming ecosystem that we live in was rebooted by Nintendo with the NES and Mario Bros after the whole Atari and ET accidents. So it's so weird seeing these guys be so behind on this front. Um, something that we were talking about offline that I like to do now is that if you guys want to grab your switches. Um, so the listeners, I'm sure you guys know this. If you go to your, like your homepage and you go to all software, you can organize all the games in your switch by playtime. And I'm really curious. We can we, we'll count out from like four to one, if that oh. makes sense. <laughs> okay. If you want, or you can do number five, or you can do three, whichever. No, I'm just I mean, looking at mine. I just I would not have picked these as my top four. Yeah. So at the top right, it should say organized by total play time. I'll I'll go mm-hmm. first here. Mm-hmm. My number four game is Pokemon Shield, which oh. I played through all the way when it first came out. And then during the pandemic, I was like, let me replay Sword and Shield, see if my opinion changes of it, because I was not hot on it after playing it. Um, Also, the DLC came out for it as well. So I played through the entire campaign twice, and then I played through the DLC as well for that game. So racked up quite a bit of time on it. Uh, Mark, what is your number four most played game on your Switch? It is Skyrim. Skyrim. Uh, uh, We'll definitely talk more about this. Not this game but just like the switch it, it's the dream combination of like nintendo wanting uh, a home console and portability mm-hmm. and the fact that i can play skyrim on the go you can't beat it and mm-hmm. it's not the best version of the game but it exists like you have a portable version of skyrim in your hands and we were talking about this like a week before steam deck comes out but i wrote an article for king gamer i think last year being like the games that need to be on switch is like the witcher 3 um gta 5 like these are old games that don't need to be as like graphically great as the other consoles on switch i want to play it on the go i want to play it before bed uh persona 5 yakuza like there's so many great games that i think would reach more players if they could play it away from their their tv or monitor again if this was just like a home console no portability Mm -hmm. That's different. It's like, okay, it's just a port of Skyrim, which, oh, okay, cool. It's on Nintendo. But the fact you can take it on the go changes the game. Yeah. And I, I just said, like, oh, Witcher 3 should be on Switch. It is on Switch. I forgot. They did port Witcher, Witcher 3 yes. on Switch. <laughs> and, and it sold, I think, I wrote in my article, it, it was like, it increased their sales in that game by, like, 20% just by having it on that platform. And that's a and game that came out 2016, I think? Uh, twenty fifth, like twenty fifteen, maybe twenty. Mm-hmm. I don't think twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen, and it is a damn good port. Yeah, or a the massive best. game like that. Come on. Yeah, um, Jessica, what is your number four game that you have? Well, I I realize my confusion now because, like I told you, I piggybacked off other people's switches. This doesn't take oh. account into my profile. It's just console. Oh, I see. So there's no Breath of the Wild here. I'm pretty sure it would be number one, but it okay. is not. And my number four is. Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. And oh, <laughs> it's cool. going off what Mark said. It's just like, oh, Final Fantasy VIII Remastered is like from my Switch. I'm definitely playing it here. Why would I get it for the TV when I can just play it in bed? Especially like, that's, there, that's the whole like, game. There is the mobile version, but like there's no like unless you have a, a Bluetooth controller, like having the Joy Cons as like the buttons beside you is just it helps so 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 much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, my number three. I'm actually I'm like, there's a game that should be up here that I'm not seeing. Like I'm still playing The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Oh, it is way down there. Holy crap. Um, <laughs> anyway, my number three is Smash Bros. Ultimate. Just like naturally, like every time a DLC character dropped, playing the campaign, playing whenever I have company over, like that game just gets so much playtime whenever friends swing by. So also I have like every amiibo for every Smash character that I have to like tap in and register. And uh, I made custom playlists in Smash Bros. So there's a time in my life where I was putting my Switch in my book bag with the Smash Bros. music catalog playing, 
So I'd be walking down the street. It'd be playing the Kid Icarus theme song. Oh, what's this? Route 3 from Pokemon Pearl? Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> so Smash Bros. got a lot of love. And it still does get a lot of love from me as well. Um, Mark, what is your number three? My number three is Super Mario Odyssey. And I will definitely talk about that game later on in the podcast. Yeah, Spoilers. I've, been, I've been wanting to replay Odyssey. There's something magical about that game that I just don't think any game has perfected since. Again, we'll... We'll definitely mm, talk yeah, about that. Totally. Um, Jessica, what's your number three? It is Pokemon Unite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got you, uh, go ahead. Hmm? Uh, no, I just got I got super obsessed with it when it came out um for like three months of my life. And then mm. work started to pick up a little bit more, which is the only reason I stopped playing it. I it's the only MOBA I've ever played. Um yeah. so it got me. I played a lot of the first season and then I just got so burnt out. Like I paid for the battle pass and I'm like, I gotta get all the skins and everything. And I've taken a long break. I booted up Pokemon Unite for the first time like four days ago. And I've been playing it again. And honestly, I'm having a good time. There's a lot of new characters that I haven't learned what their abilities are. So I bought um, the Gengar character and I bought uh, Mamoswine, I think. So I'm having some new characters to play as. It is a really good free-to-play MOBA. Like, I, I'm really happy. And like, yeah, it's a great game overall. And I'm curious to see who they're going to add later on into the game's mm -hmm. uh, history. Uh, my number two is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. For almost two years, or for the last two years during the pandemic, I'd wake up, I'd make coffee, I'd contemplate article ideas, and I'd listen to podcasts and play Mario Kart 8 online. Like, it was, like, every day, multiple hours, probably from, like, mid-2021 to the end of the year, just Mario Kart 8 every day uh, online, trying to get, like, that five-digit score. I'm at, like, 9,050-something. I'm trying to get to five digits, but... It's number two right now. After the DLC comes out, I can see it passing my number one most played game. But we'll see. Uh, Mark, what is your number two? Uh, no shot. Breath of the Wild. Who saw it coming? Not me. <laughs> who, who saw the most popular Switch game? <laughs> uh, I, I, we'll definitely talk about that. Yeah, I'm shocked it's not in my top four. But um, Jessica, what do you have at, at number two? Yet another live service game. Fortnite. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm one of those weird Switch Fortnite players. It looks freaking awful. Awful. It's anytime so I buy a cosmetic, it's not the Switch. <laughs> so I was playing Fortnite on my Switch for a bit until I started playing it on my PS5. There is no going back. <laughs> like, if you load a character model on the Switch, it looks like an N64 character model. Like, they are so And that's not pixely. exaggerating. Mm -hmm. Like, they're polygons. Like, Nathan Drake has, like, eight points of curvature on his whole character it is crazy but you can play on the go it's pretty nice well you see the reason why i switched switched uh -huh. switch, hey. is because i play off my housemate and i hate okay. the dual screen like they do actually do a pretty good job of mm. making it um fit because it's not just like this and then you yep. have one and two they, they they put them like on the sides but i just want the screen right there in my face as opposed to this tiny corner over here far away yeah. from me that's that's the only reason i play on my switch Totally makes sense. Um, I'll be curious if this is all of our number ones. My number one is Animal Crossing. My number one is Animal Crossing. <laughs> not Animal Crossing. Yeah. And honestly, it's not even from me. Like, my partner just loves building islands and stuff. So I asked her to, like, build me, like, a Survivor-themed island, and she's still Ooh. working on it. Most of the playtime on Animal Crossing is from her playing my file, not even me doing anything. So, <laughs> but there definitely, like... so many, like... Sorry, but like so many like tribal councils and survivor themes, like mm -hmm. Animal Crossing is just massive. And that's why going back, that's year two, 2020. Yeah. And like I my goal was to have a reference from every season, which is like 42 seasons on the island. Wow. It was gonna be like, yeah, it was gonna be complicated and I was gonna pay her. And then she's like, I'm your girlfriend, don't give me money. Um <laughs> So I, I love that game. And like, like like Mark was saying, it's so hard to disassociate this game with the beginning of the pandemic. Like it came out, what, five days? Like for me personally, like five or six days after the lockdown first began for us, after my last day of work and everything, the only light I had, Animal Crossing's in five days. And just like a fun, like not fun, it's just like an interesting backstory. So I'm a essential worker. I, I didn't work from home, worked there. And a month before then, this is a different site. It was my first big video game, and it was MLB The Show. <laughs> so that got released March 17th, 2020. And I'm mm. like, all right, I'm going to have 
free time with this. Mm -hmm. And boy, that was stressful. And I wanted to, uh, it, it's a great game, but I wanted to finish that review so much because everyone played Animal Crossing. And yeah. that was just like Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing. I'm like, uh, I bought the game, but I, I want to play it now. <laughs> got to play NBA. Yeah. It was... Ugh, I got to play with <laughs> Jordan Alvarez. Oh, bummer. <laughs> it was the same with me with Animal Crossing. So I actually, they stopped doing tests for coronavirus the day I got sick and had to oh, take. No. So I don't oh. know if I ever got it. I'm pretty sure I got it. Mm -hmm. I was just confined to my room. And it's very strange, but all I did, I'd never seen it before. I stuck on Breaking Bad in the morning and I played Animal Crossing while I watched it. So those are totally but, two very different things, but I appreciate the balance you're going for. Yeah, I, I mean, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I wasn't putting any thought in the Animal Crossing. It's like, I'll go and I'll dig up the little holes and I'll go fishing while I watch people making meth. I can't wait till I go to your island and all I see is like barren desert, a couple barrels with some weird bones inside them for some reason, um, an <laughs> RV. I think you're living in an RV on your island. Like I'm trying to think of like all, a chicken oh, restaurant. Cool. Chicken restaurant. And it's just Actually, like someone some who looks like Heisenberg and it's like, yeah, I'm going to say some of your villagers might not like the idea of a chicken restaurant in your animal filled <laughs> village. It's like, they're hey, they're like, <laughs> Hey, I heard there was an open spot. The last chicken that, that, that lived here just moved away, right? It's like, yes, he moved <laughs> away. Ace is gone. Um, anyway, so yes, yeah, Animal Crossing this... um, got Animal Crossing and Breaking Bad got me through being sick at the start of the pandemic. Oh my god. Well, that, that's good to hear. Um, Mark, did you say your number one? Uh, well, I said it before the show because mm. I didn't know we're doing reveal, but it is the OG Final Fantasy VII. Oh, oh, cool, yeah. So yeah. last year, actually around this time, maybe April, but I, I mentioned in this podcast before, post-show recaps, the host, uh, Josh Wickler and Brooklyn said, I'm part of that Discord. It's an amazing community. We, uh, they kind of already started like two or three episodes, and I'm like, I want to get involved. So I'm like, are you guys playing the remake? And Brooklyn said, messaged me and said like, hey, like it's on the Switch. It's like eight bucks, <laughs> buy it. Yeah. And it's the first podcast game I had, which I'm listening to a podcast about the game. And it's not <laughs> like if I'm listening to kind of uh, funny and they're talking about Horizon. No, this is uh, Jessica. If you don't know this podcast, it's um, so Josh Wilker, he played it since like it first came out. And Brooklyn said they haven't played it at all. So it's more of like a rewatch podcast, but. They're playing through it, and I was in Brooklyn Zed's uh, shoes. So super unique, and it's one of the best game experiences that I ever had. It's a really cool idea of like somebody who's played the game probably over a thousand times and somebody who's never played it before once, and then they go through like section by section, like we're going to play up to the end of Midgar. Okay, now we're playing up to the point where this person joins your party, and it's almost like a book club, but with the game. Like it's, it, it's really cool. A hundred percent, like stop at this point, yeah. and it's like, the most obvious things that everyone knows, but I'm like, Arif, what happened to her? It's like, well, well, yeah, about that, Mark. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's your number one. You've played more Final Fantasy VII than like Mario Odyssey. That is, have you played it more than once or just like the one playthrough took you a long time? There's a lot of side quests mm. and I kind of got lost. So I'm like listening to their podcast, like at that point, but I'm like going through a guide. I'm like, okay, if I go there, and then it's kind of like I also have like the game on while I'm on Discord. I'm like, hey, community, uh, shout out to Mike. I can't pronounce Mike Edwards. Mm. Mike Edwards, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I almost pronounced this D&D &D character. I'm like, no, that's not his last name. Uh, banter for a second. I want to I want to grab something real quick. I want to show you that I grabbed recently. I'll be right back in like 20 seconds. Well, and Final Fantasy VII is just a massive game, even if you weren't listening to podcasts or anything. It like, is. I've actually never completed it because I played it a lot when I was younger. It's just huge, especially if you're not using a guide or anything. It can take a very long time. Yeah, it is massive. I think it was like, I have the email, but they're like, hey, you played like 70 hours of like mm. Final Fantasy VII. I'm like, well, God damn. <laughs> um, so I, I've worked in a, I worked, worked in used video game stores for a very long time. My partner, I don't do that anymore, but my partner does now. 
And this came in and she was like, do you mind if I spend $60 on something for you? And I was like, I guess, sure. Uh, <laughs> she got me the original official uh, Final Fantasy VII strategy guide in like no the way. condition I've ever seen. That is perfect condition. Copyright Ooh. from 1997. Um, all the characters in the back, like uh, back in the day, this sold for $14.99 USA on like your like whatever newsstand. We so, had this, I remember, and it is not in mint condition. <laughs> it's ripped yeah. to shreds, but it was cool having a guide back in the day. Yeah, it's like one of those things that like I, I love, you guys can tell, I love physical media and physical goods so much. I could look up the IGN guide or I could have my good old pen and paper with my maps and my icons and my typos. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one last thing, Cat Sif, I'm a fan of that character. Hate me. That's my gaming hot take of all time. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm so confused about what, like, I've done the remake. I don't know what that cat was doing when it was, like, really sad during the explosion of Sector uh, Why 11. did they even introduce Cat Sif in the remake? It was so weird. Okay, in their defense, <laughs> it's Cat it's Sif. Oh, fancy, I wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> but at yeah, least Red 13 was a part of the story. It was just, yeah, oh, yeah. no, an explosion. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, ah, you blew it up, <laughs> you maniacs. And I'm like, cinema. <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, that was the biggest WTF moment for me in my entire Final Fantasy. There's some weird crap that happened in that game. I was like, who the hell is this cat? Yeah, my eyes was like, what just happened? They were playing it the first time. Like, what? What? Why are they here? And then they never came back. Mark, he portrayed the whole group. Why are you siding with it? And I'm like, because he's a cat and he's writing (laughs) this blob. (laughs) He's a cat with gloves. It's a cat and a little crown. Oh my god! I'm not even a cat person. I like cats. <laughs> I like dogs more. But I'm like, I like it. Nice. Well, that was a that was a that bit concludes of a... the Final Fantasy VII retrospective podcast. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say, hey Kyle, do you want to shout out anything you're doing at the moment? Um. Oh wait, we're still doing the podcast. My we're still doing the podcast part. I, you, you generally threw me off. I'm like, wait, are we rapping? Are you still <laughs> <are you> posting <laughs> chair from me? Are you, are you shutting down my podcast? Uh, um, so those were our most played games, but there are some ones I want to recommend. Some Switch exclusives that like they're not my most played. I'm actually surprised one of them isn't. But I'll go first. I I told each of you guys to pick like exclusives or whatever. Honestly. I know it's maybe too late. Any Switch games that you feel like you want to shout out as like, if you have a Switch, you should play this game. My number one is going to be Cadence of Hyrule, which is the rhythm-based Zelda game from the creators of Crypt of the Necrodancer. This game rocks so much. The, the remixes of the Zelda songs are amazing. The gameplay loop is uh, like incred- incredibly satisfying. Um, they have released DLC where you can play as Skull Kid and other characters that I have not played yet, but I want to. Um, I think it's like 19 bucks on the Switch. If you're a fan of like rhythm games, if you're a fan of Zelda, if you're a fan of really great soundtracks, you have to play Cadence of Hyrule. Yeah, um, I didn't get it because it was a spin-off game. And I'm always a little bit dubious of, but I didn't know it was pe- the people who did Crypt of the Necrodancer. Like, that's it, really cool. Yeah, it does. It has the same mechanics where, like, it has this, the singing merchant and everything doing his, like, incredibly, like, opera-based vocals. And it's a short game, too. I think you can beat the campaign in maybe, like, six to eight hours. So not a huge time commitment either. Uh, Mark, what do you have for recommendations for people who have a Switch? Um, recommendations, I think if you want to go through, like, the history of Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And this is an asterisk because I th- you can still find it in stores, but Super Mario 3D All-Stars right. is amazing. <laughs> Here's a red for me. Why not Super Mario Galaxy 2? Yeah, that's weird, right? Unless they're planning on like doing yeah. an HD version of that by itself as like a full $80 game. Don't but... give me hope. Remember <laughs> how they released 3D All Stars and said you all only have a year to buy this game before we pulled off shelves? Again, a... when I meant the Nintendo being Nintendo, that. Yeah, yeah what well... the hell is the logic? <laughs> They even released a game called like Mario Bros. 35 that was like a Mario Brothers Battle Royale game that was only playable for about five months before they, they just shut off servers. Not because it wasn't popular. They're like, nope, it's a timed release. Bye, everyone. Bye. Ugh. 
Yeah, Nintendo were so like, why do we make this a pristine project? Ah, don't well, let people play it when they want to. How do we release pristine projects while also releasing cardboard VR? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. Um, but Mark, when it comes to 3D All Stars, as soon as I got it, I played through uh, Mario 64, and I, I 100% that game. Like, I I love the original. Sunshine is like in the middle for me, and then I, I'll always love Galaxy. But that, that's a great collection of three great games. I just wish they did more with them. Is probably my biggest critique. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Sunshine holds a special place because that's the first video game I ever played. Mm -hmm. wow. And just, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm a baby in your eyes or I'm an old man. <laughs> Who knows? No, it was. I love Sunshine too because it was the first 3D Mario I ever liked. Yeah. I, it had su such cool water effects. I love the setting, but going back to it on All Stars, the camera is so bad. Imagine if they imagine if they just like instead of releasing this like pack of three games, like making Mario sixty four with the Mario Odyssey engine, like oh. that. Ooh. Like if they'd have done that instead of like, hey, here's three games with like barely any HD updates to them. I think that would have been great, but um. Yeah, great job. I, I always forget it, it, it exists, honestly. <laughs> and that was actually my number fifth or six I have to turn off, but like most played. Oh, yeah. And 64, like, this is like the fifth time they released 64 in the Wii shop, in the Wii U mm -hmm. shop, which are closed. There's yeah. a DS version. Yeah, the DS version, but like DS remake, including all yeah. the other stuff. And then like the Wii U has that one, or like it had that one. But the first time we're getting like Sunshine which got hd that was the only like touch mm -hmm. up 64 they didn't really touch one percent they touch yeah. and galaxy they touch and i'm surprised how well they did the wii u of the, like the re like remotes of control because it seems mm -hmm. seamless it's just yeah just these uh little joy cons that's it yeah and it's kind of like why don't you do like other like wii games that have this but I I don't know. But I think, I think they've lost focus on the whole motion controller stuff. I think that they really wrote on it for like one two switch and even like Mario Odyssey has like some like vibration based mini games. But I I don't remember the last game that really focused on either HD Rumble or like any of like the motion stuff. We Sports is coming up, but besides that, I don't know. I I don't mean like doing the motion. I mean converting like the Wii games that were all motion based. Oh, sorry, yeah. No 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 worries. Because that actually brings a good point about one, two, three, switch, which I'll get to. But like, just just make the Joy Cons. But those games, if you love Mario, like mm -hmm. Odyssey, which I'll talk about later, yeah. And if you're able to get it, you you probably will play those games. They're one of the best games of all time. They're they're classics for a reason, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. So Jessica, what do you have for uh, for a recommendation for everyone out there? Um, I think I'll go for like a little indie game first. Um, yeah. It's basically a Zelda ripoff, but I loved it because it's kind of like a, a newer, what are you going to guess? Uh, maybe. I Is it is it Blossom Tales? It's probably not Blossom no, Tales. No, no, no. Okay. Is it it's, Melda? <laughs> no. It, it's wow. available on my platforms, but I played it on the Switch. It is always on sale on the Switch. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Can I guess? Yeah. Because this was number five. Immortals uh, Phoenix Rising? No. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, there's, there's only like two more games for us to guess. So if we keep guessing, we're going to get it eventually. Like, there's, <laughs> that there's, is there's an not Elder Ripoff. And on platform. Uh, yep. I was right. Get... Okay, what's, what is <laughs> it? Right, what is it, Jessica? <laughs> okay, you get bonus points. It's Oceanhorn Monster of Uncharted Seas. Interesting. I've heard about this game, but I haven't played it. So tell so us a little bit about a, it. It's a little indie game. I think it might even be available on mobile. I can't remember. It's like sort of more traditional Zelda games, but it kind of looks like Tunic, what Tunic are doing. Just mm. like a cute, like sort of isometric view. It combines like Wind Waker elements. So you've got a boat, um, it's got puzzles. Honestly, it's like Zelda. And it's not even the, the person on the cover looks like Link. Like I can show <laughs> you here. Or is it? Yeah. Um, but if you want if you want a Zelda ripoff, it's not Zelda. And it's it's indie. So it's got it's doing its own thing. It has kind of convoluted puzzles sometimes um uh, like zelda but it's very satisfying when you work them out yeah i can't get his picture he's link um he's, he's link yeah he's link uh obviously if you want a, um a pristine zelda experience there's breath of the wild but um it's it the number one reason i'd say why i'm recommending this is because it's it's always on sale for like less than five dollars on the switch yeah. and yeah, it, so it's just a cool short zelda like experience a good quality game for a good price tag, which is always mm -hmm. always nice to hear. 
Um, I'm gonna hop into my my next one. I'm gonna try and speed things up a little bit. I can hear my cat like having a panic attack in the other room right now, <laughs> like scratching at my door. Um, wow, Marcus on the podcast, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> my cat's your biggest fan, by the way. She just wants to get in here to see your face. That's all it is. Um, so I'm leaning more towards like the more like unique or obscure games, like games that you can only play on Switch that are like different than other things. So Cadence of Hyrule. I'm gonna shout out Ring Fit Adventure because man, we fit was cool at the time, but the fact they made an exercise game that is both fun, has a compelling narrative, and is willing to adapt to how much you want to work. Where I feel like we fit was more like you're doing 50 push-ups today. I don't care what you say. Where <laughs> Ring Fit is a lot more flexible and is a lot more. What do you want to do today? What is your goal for the next couple of weeks? You want to drop two pounds? I'm gonna do my best to make to help you get there. Um, I love Ring Fit. I really wish I hadn't dropped off it. It was a thing where I was playing it every day for weeks to a point where I was waking up sore and getting a little discouraged to play it to a point. And that happens with any exercise, I imagine. I don't do much, but I imagine it happens. I want to go back to it because it was really fun and it was actually effective of helping my physical and like almost mental uh, health as well. I think Ring Fit is amazing. If you can find one, you don't need to get a Peloton and you don't need to get, uh, you know, the Richard Simmons uh, one, two step (laughs) VHS tape. You no, only... get it. It's amazing entertainment. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Richard Simmons? That's the right guy, right? The workout guy? The Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of like workout really people, flamboyant, but Richard yeah. Simmons, like, have you ever seen that Whose Line Is It Anyway clip of like, yeah, him and furniture? If I'm doing the ski-do? Yeah. yeah well, yep. I, I always get Richard Simmons and Gene Simmons mixed up, so I do want to clarify. I'm not talking about the lead <laughs> singer of Kiss right now. <laughs> uh, who are two people? I don't want to think about their tons for 800, Alex. <laughs> Uh, Gene Simmons and Richard Simmons? <laughs> well, um, you know. Yeah. Um, so Ring Fit Adventure, it yes. is really, really cool. If you can see it out there, pick it up. Uh, even if you don't like exercising, there's actually some really cool mini games on there as well. Almost like a one-two switch where you're like breaking boxes by hitting the thing. And you can. there's actually an offline mode where even if you're not playing the game on your TV, you can do the ring stuff while you're watching a movie, watching a TV show. It is effective even without the software, which is very cool. Uh, 100% I have the ring fit adventure. Oh, cool. Here's the thing. I love your pick, even though it makes me feel like crap. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm looking at my belly. I'm like, I got a belly. The hell I feel crap every time I look at my ring fit. Yeah. To be fair, but, Ian, it's very good and not like you said with the we fit. It's very good and not shaming you. Yeah. It's very positive. Like, yeah, we're going to do this together. I remember the we fit being like, it's been 12 days since you were last year. Like what's going on? Like, is there something you have to tell me? And like, I'm like, we fit. Calm down. I was, I had some friends over. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> it's a very toxic relationship for me, me and we fit. But I feel like it's really just improved with a ring fit adventure. And I've let uh, a trainer that I used to know like play it, and mm-hmm. he was surprised how well it was with exercise. They teach you about form. It'll kick your butt. Yep. But it will like, hey, are you feeling like? up to it like all right we'll decrease it but hey it's all on you different exercise great it'll always ask you at the end of a session do you want to work harder next time or do you want to work less next time and i'll show that as well they added a feature last year that is music from games like zelda breath of the wild and splatoon and it's rhythm based exercises to the music of those games mario odyssey you can do jump up superstar and you can do like a workout exercise to that song if you like that's probably bad audio as i was doing that um (laughs) but it's it's really cool, and there's there's actually a lot of depth to the game as well. It's not just pick up and work out and die. It is like there's some fun things in there. Um, Mark, what is your second pick for recommendations? And also, if you get the Ring Fit Adventure, you'll have the leg strap, yes. which will be a big theme for Nintendo Soccer. Switch Sports. Yeah, totally. Good call. Um, um, yeah. I'm surprised they haven't done like the rain with like Mario, like any compatibility, but whatevs. I thought they were going to do something with WarioWare and the Ring Fit. That was like one of my predictions last year. Is like that WarioWare game's coming out. You could do some, like, some silly mini games with the Ring Fit, but they they didn't do that. Which I assume is smart to not assume everyone has a Ring Fit because we don't. Um, but yeah, Mark, what was your next pick? Um, so I'm going to go with an indie that's been on a lot of platforms, but with the Switch, it's um, Switch games, as in like Nintendo published games and mm. indie games. If anyone who has not played Celeste, buy it on the Switch. It is one of the best games of all time. I'm one of those people. Why should I play it on Switch over anything else? I'm not going to answer that, Kyle. That's not just kidding. I'm just going to pace back and forth wondering, where do I buy Celeste? Where do I buy Celeste? 
<laughs> Again, it's just the portability mm-hmm. and maybe because it feels, I'm not going to say an old school Nintendo, but just old school throne controller. By the way, don't yeah. throw this. It is very no. expensive. But just the memories I had, like I remember like being sick and just watching Celeste's journey mm-hmm. and mental health yeah themes over time oh my god that's a that's a really good pick and not that's why i wanted to open it up to non-exclusives because i think there are just so many great games that you can play on switch that you can play on pc or you can play on your playstation but playing on switch makes it a little bit more special for some games not all yeah yeah um have you played celeste jessica Mm -mm. i watched someone play half of a playthrough it looked beautiful so if i was to get it didn't know it was on switch i get it on switch I saw somebody do a speed run at a Games Done Quick in January. I think their time was like 25 or 30 minutes. And watching that speed run was like watching ballet in a way. There's <laughs> yeah. like a grace to speedrunning Celeste that like I will never be in that Zen state of mind. Same as how I'll, I'll never be able to play Sekiro blindfolded. Um, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Give me a couple more years. Uh, Jessica, what was your next recommendation? So I'm basically going all third party because we've mentioned every first party game that you should Mm -hmm. probably get. And I'm not as into the niche Nintendo stuff, but um, this is a game I regularly just, I go down to my mom's once a week. I just whip out the switch and start playing this while talking to someone. It's Dead Cells. Oh, hell yeah. It is such a cool game. Uh, It's a 2D um, side scrolling, like a roguelite. Yes, roguelite. Sorry, I couldn't remember the name of it. Um, I wasn't really a huge fan of roguelike before playing Dead Cells, mm. um, but it's just so cool. The combat in it flows very well. Um, I've played it on, I think it was on Game Pass on the big TV. I've played it on my Switch, but again, the Switch, just the portability, being able to play it wherever you want. It's something that you can go in and out of, and then you can just click the power button on your Switch and come immediately back in. Uh, yeah. Doesn't It doesn't matter that it doesn't have a save system, even though it's a, a roguelike. Um, the art style is so cool. Um and I, I just love all the different systems in it. It's it's for me, it's the ultimate pick up and play game on my Switch. I, I, I don't know why it wasn't in my top four. Again, I think it was because it was on a different Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. But I love it. I highly recommend it to anyone who likes Roblox. I think what's cool about Dead Cells, just like what comes to mind immediately is if you liked Hades, which is like more of like a, a top down roguelite, Dead Cells is more of like your your 2D but not, it's not a platformer. I wouldn't. I would not classify it as a platformer. But you are. Yeah, you jump. <laughs> you, you jump. But it's more of a two D angle that you're playing as. And I think Dead Cells came out 2018. But I'm still reading updates and free updates coming out from the developers of the game. They're still working on it and adding new content, adding new story details. So this is a game that's about four years old, and it's still seeing support from its developers, which is really neat to see. Have you played uh, Dead Cells, Mark? Not yet. No, but... it is a game I see on sale, so keep your eye open. Will do. Will do. Um, so my number one is a game that kind of doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is be a member of the Nintendo Switch Online service, because that gets you access to the best part of the whole program, which is Tetris 99, which is... I remember where I was when Nintendo had a Direct, and they announced that they were, they were doing a Tetris Battle Royale game. We're putting 99 players into a Tetris match. Whenever you clear a line, you're sending blocks to your enemies. And it is probably the most fun I've had playing a game in so long. And I'm not even a a Tetris guy. I came into Tetris really late in life. It was probably actually 2018 that this game dropped as well as Tetris Effect for PSVR. That I was like, man, I've been missing 20 years of Tetris my whole life. I will preface all of this by saying I am 90 hours into Tetris, Tetris 99. I have never won. <laughs> I love I love playing it so much, though. And, like, that dream of finally getting my victory is still alive, even after all this time. Um, what really helps me keep an interest in it is every two or three weeks, they'll do a new theme or a new, like, weekend tournament where you can unlock different Tetris backgrounds and music while you're playing. And they're usually associated with a new release, like a Metroid skin or a there's there's actually a Pokemon Legends Arceus uh, theme out there now where you have like really subtle music playing and all that stuff. So I love Tetris 99 and um, one day I'll win, but not anytime, not anytime soon. Do you guys well, play I at believe all? Or, in you. Do you guys play Tetris 99 at all or not really? Sometimes. Sometimes. Never played actually. Is it 
link just to Nintendo Online or is it free on Nintendo Online? It's free. So if you pay for like the the base service, um, I think if you go to like benefits or something, it'll be like, oh, here's the NES games, here's the SNES games, and here's Tetris 99 kind oh. of thing. So I I highly implore you you play it because it's so good and so fun. I do I do like Tetris. My um, my, I'm always second best to my brother though. Like he's honest <laughs> to God. If he did tournaments, he was he was like number ten in a certain Tetris in the UK at some point. Like he was number mm, wow. ten in the score. And there's a two player, and he's like, "You want to play Tetris with me?" I was like, "Absolutely no, not." <laughs> no. <laughs> Have you guys ever watched like the Tetris speedrunners who play where the blocks are invisible? Oh my god, what? Oh, so you oh can just my... see what's coming up next on the side? You see what's coming up on the side, but as it's dropping, oh, you don't know okay. what shape it is, and you have wow. to find like it is the craziest stuff. I'm gonna send you guys a link in Slack after this podcast. It is some <laughs> of the most mind blowing stuff. It is like. Um, what is that uh, meme, Mark? I'm gonna ask you about. <laughs> there's like the simple brain, and then there's like the the kind of bigger brain, and then the. And it's like the galaxy brain. Yeah, yeah, galaxy brain is like playing Tetris without seeing the blocks. Like it is like <laughs> out of this world, amazing. Yeah. Um, but Mark, what do you have as your uh, your ne- your last re- recommendation? Okay, so this is two games in one because I forgot uh, we're doing three, not mm. four. I'm not good at math. <laughs> um, but I'll keep it short. It is. The most basic of basic recommendations. It, it's Breath from the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah. Because Do, I, I'm yeah. because this is like the angle of like, hey, you, you don't have a switch. Get these games. Yeah. And you guys definitely great games. But Super Mario Odyssey, it's the best Mario and what they were able to do with it. Like we talk about like that year one, like that second half of having mm-hmm. that game. Phenomenal stuff. The creativity, the music, jump up superstar, and mm-hmm. whatever that second song is. Yeah. You know, like oh, when I, you're escaping. Uh, I know what you mean when you're playing as Bowser or whatever. Spoilers, but whatever. Unless you want me to do karaoke. <laughs> oh, Mario <but>. spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Does he save the princess? Um, I was gonna say, uh, I had a thought and I just lost it. I was confused. I was getting ready for your uh, your performance and then I just my brain went like blank. <laughs> like, what do I do? Your um, fault, Mark. Sorry, with Mario Odyssey, As I do. Superstar. Superstar. <laughs> there should be a video game character. Have fun bar. editing that, Kyle. <laughs> and the machine is the machine is only full of video game songs. You cannot choose Queen. You can't choose uh, Bruce Springsteen. You have to sing licensed video game tracks at my karaoke bar. And if I you were, wait. you can't choose her uh, Stairway to Heaven. No, no, I can't pay for the rates for that. I unfortunately, I don't have that kind of pocket money. <laughs> There, um, oh, we can't. But what I love about Mario Odyssey is that how much it rewards the player for discovery. That's like a game where you're like, it's almost like Breath of the Wild or any open world game. Where you're like, what's that thing over there that's like shining or something? You go, it's like an HD rumble puzzle, or it's a toad without a hat, and you help him, and you get a moon. You walk into a new store. Oh, hey, you get a moon. Go back to Oprah Winfrey, right? You get a moon, yeah. you get a moon. But You all get moons! Yeah. This game is so satisfying, and it probably has, I'm going to say, the moment in New, New Donk City when you get the band all together might oh. be one of my favorite moments in video games flat, where you're going through the 8-bit uh, Donkey Kong throwback level as Jump Up Superstar is playing in the background with fireworks, and the, the whole city is dancing. Um, that is a cool moment. But also, man, those Dark Side of the Moon challenges, like, if you want 100% Mario Odyssey... That last level took me two, three weeks maybe to master. It was brutal. And uh, you 100% on the creativity. Mm-hmm. And also it is an advancement of Mario games while being a perfect celebration. Yeah, totally. At the same time, Avengers Breath of the Wild. I mean, we, we've talked about and just everyone talks about how a masterpiece it is. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to put it in this angle. If you care about video games, ever since that game came out, Games have wanted to become the next Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And so that Elden Ring is now the next Breath of the Wild, or at least Breath of the Wild-esque. Yeah, it's the closest we've come to an actual, like, spiritual successor. There's been a lot of clones, let's shout out, like, Immortal Phoenix Rising, and, like, games that are yep. just trying to be Breath of the Wild. Elden Ring feels like the first game to take, learn, and implement on a lot of those mechanics and features, which is, I cannot wait to play it. I don't want peas and carrots. Please give me cake um hmm. yeah so yeah mario odyssey breath of the wild and i i'd say probably just two of the best games of the last decade 
And I like Super Mario Odyssey, one of the best Nintendo games. Mm -hmm. And not just, even though I rate Mario higher than Zelda, play the game that everyone's calling the best game of all time. Because there's a (laughs) reason why it's being called the best game of all time. It has like a 97 on Metacritic. If you look through any list, like top 10 video games of all time, Breath of the Wild is usually up there. Guaranteed. Crazy. Mario Odyssey. Why not play it? Yeah. 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 It's it's almost like becoming like show and tell. I want to grab my. uh an open box of Mario Odyssey cereal I have up on my shelf. Oh but... my God. No. Yes. Go get it. <laughs> okay. Eat banter. it live on camera. We want the views. Banter, but nobody <laughs> judge my pajama pants. <laughs> oh Only if God. you don't judge mine. <laughs> oh my God. Viewers. If you have seen Kyle's pajama pants, it is a tragic mistake. It looks like uh party cities leftover of Halloween. I don't even know if it's shackle in there. Oh, Ugh. wow. You would do well in sex in the city, Mark. That was quite the burn. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, what, Super Mario series. We, we <laughs> I just realized I can't hear you guys. <laughs> so yeah, that's why Kyle's is awesome. Hey, what's up? Go to the YouTube version. Oh, look at that. What's oh, is that your Wii? <laughs> just to remind me to not eat the cereal or else I'll get fat. <laughs> that's why you recommend a Wii Fit. Uh, the, what was it Ring Fit? Ring Fit, yeah. So, for people who don't know, this cereal box is an amiibo. That's why I have it. Like, oh this my, is why it's an amiibo. It doesn't have the, an amiibo in it. The only reason I have this is because it's part of my amiibo collection. <laughs> wow, I didn't even know that existed. Uh, sorry, it's too bright. Uh, this Man. box is a special amiibo. Try it with Mario Odyssey. I believe it gives you a one up. One up. <laughs> okay, and that's full, it. Full cereal. <laughs> Give me the That's amiibo good. that shows me like, hey, this is where we march on the map. <laughs> when there's like a Walking Dead apocalypse and I'm bargaining with my Mario cereal because everyone's like, oh, we need food, we need cigarettes. I'm like, I got, I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, anyway, Jessica, so what you was your... Missed, uh, Jessica said I should be on Sex in the City. Jessica, what am I? Am I Samantha? Am I a Charlotte? Am I I feel like Charlotte? any answer I'm going to give you, you're going to get offended. <laughs> so... I legit, I was gone for yep. 10 seconds. That's 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I was gone for 10 seconds getting that cereal box. You guys talked about sex in the city? <laughs> yeah, you leave us for 10 seconds and it's off the rails again. <laughs> That's what happened when I left you alone for two hours last week. Jesus. Wait, oh, 10 seconds. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jessica, what was your uh, your last pick for search recommendations? Um, It's another indie game. <laughs> I would have I would have put Breath of the Wild at number one, but I knew someone would pick it. And it, just talking about it for a little while, it Oops. is incredible. No, it um it came out at a time I didn't play it for a little bit afterwards because um, my brother got fairly sick at the same time. It was great for him in hospital. The switch had just came out. My cousin bought him a switch to play while he was in there, and he just heavily associates playing Zelda with being in the hospital, and like mm-hmm. it got him through a bunch of stuff. Um, he was able to bond with uh, another patient's like daughter because she she helped him. She worked out some of the puzzles with him. Oh, that's so nice. Uh, there's so so, awesome. there's so much going on in it and then for me um i moved back in that to help him for a little bit that's when i played zelda uh i played like 120 hours it definitely would be my number one on switch if it was my one and it is just a world that you can get lost in and unlike elden ring such a happy tone it's so yeah. colorful it's so beautiful it is such a selling point for what um an art style can do over good graphics because totally Mm -hmm. graphics are awesome horizons look incredible and i love it when games do it when they can when they can that art style is just so great it transports you there i don't even mind it doesn't really have like zelda doesn't really have like an intricate story going on all the time Mm -hmm. it's just being in that world it's like truly being in a zelda world i talked about last week about link to the past um was one of my favorite but that's like one of my favorite like more traditional zelda games mark's right you should just you should just play it no matter what buy it just buy it. Yeah. But anyway, my number one that I'm going to recommend <laughs> <laughs> is I actually reviewed it for King Gamer. I give it an, an eight um, for what it is. It's Necro Barista. Oh, cool. Um, oh. It's, it's a cool, like, um, I've for- completely forgotten what the genre is called. Visual novel. Mm-hmm. It's a visual novel. Um, it's a it's really unique. It's an Australian developer. It's set in Australia. It's about uh, a couple of people who work in a coffee shop, but it's like in between life and death people are mm-hmm. there. Um, and it's a story about about accepting accepting death and moving on and grieving. And it's a really good isolated story for what it is and it, mm. it also has really cool unique visual novel like visuals another thing about art style it's kind of polygonal and blocky but it's like on purpose 
And instead of just uh, being, because it's 3D, it's not like hand-drawn, instead of them just being static and text on screen, you get like small movements with the characters okay. and it helps It helps add like a little pacing to because there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of pacing to it. Um, it's a cool indie game. I really recommend it. And on the Switch, it's the final poor edition. So you get right. side stories in it, which give you uh, about different customers who are like, trying to move on. Yeah. Um, it's a pre- pretty emotional game. You might cry. <laughs> My only question about it is, do you know how long it would take like to get through it and roll credits? Because I've been having a bad habit of locking myself into like fifty to sixty hour visual oh, novels, no. which like man, yeah. they take so like I'm still playing Grady's Attorney too. Like these games go on forever. Hopefully, I'll oh, no. check my my play time. I think it was at the maximum twenty hours. I don't even think it was fifteen, maybe. And that's like you like that's talking to everyone. That's like you like doing everything. Pretty satisfied. Oh wow, okay, that. Mm-hmm. That brings it up because I was definitely intrigued, but I was like, I don't have. An, oh really my god, no, Kyle, way less than that. Six hours. <laughs> really? Okay, this yeah. is really bite sized. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm I'm a thousand times more intrigued now that I know this. Um. Yeah, I think no matter what, no matter what games we said, no matter what ones you decide to buy or pick up, there is such a a scope and range of titles for everyone on the Switch. Whether it's the big AAA games like Mario Odyssey or an indie like uh. Uh, Necrobarista, Tetris 99, uh, Cadence of Hyrule. There is something out there for everyone, and I genuinely find myself checking the eShop every couple of days to make sure I didn't miss something. So, I do the exact same. It seals. Yeah. What indie games on sale? Like, as you've seen from my picks, I love indie games on the Switch. Yeah. I love just yeah. playing them in that's, my head. That's like my, like, indie console wise, that's definitely the Switch. Just two last things I want to talk about Switch. Mm-hmm. One, I like how I don't feel any pressure on the switch and what i mean by that like if i'm playing horizon i want to get all the trophies it's right. looking me dead in the face like mark you didn't do all this mm-hmm. so you know what switch does it doesn't care it accepts me for who i am and that's why i felt good putting pokemon legends away when i did because like there is more the game said i could do there is some side quests i missed there is some other odds and ends there's some of the new dlc that came out last week that i have kind of touched I found a point in that game where I was satisfied with, and I was like, you know what? Back on the shelf with ye. I don't have to worry about, you know, missing three trophies, like you said, or missing some, like, you know, something that, that'd be killing me inside because I missed it. I set a bar for myself. I crossed it. Done with the game. I, I kind of create my own deadline with that stuff. Yeah, 100%. And two, one, two, uh, three switch. Mm-hmm. If it was a demo game, Instead of buying for 60 bucks, mm-hmm. it, like, what a missed opportunity. Like, that could have been the Wii Sports. It should have been a pack-in. It should have just been with the console day one. Like, exactly. It should not have been a separate purchase. Um, there, there's some fun games on there. I think three of them are probably worth going back to. Some of them are like, I'll play it once and never do it again. There's a baby one in there where you're supposed to, like, rock your Switch and then put it down gently without making it cry. Like, there's some weird <laughs> shenanigans happening in 1-2-Switch um there's like the hot dog eating competition you guys remember this you have to put your joy con in front of your mouth and make a chewing motion as fast as you can <laughs> like i never man. played it i had no idea this is what the Again, mini games were if oh, this was trailer. a demo this should have been like i'm not gonna say like the switch would have sold even more mm-hmm. but i'm like that just would have made the switch even better because i feel like wii sports astro's playroom with the ps5 mm-hmm. just showing like the tech demo like but yet again, you charge 60 bucks. That's always bugged me. That's it. 